yes good morning everyone is my audio and video everything clear hope my audio and video everything is clear yes fine yeah hmm. so good morning everyone so chalo so let's discuss the uh, shift to one of 31st january 2024 je mains exam so here we got somewhere around 20 plus questions so all the questions we are going to discuss so you just uh, have to understand the concepts behind these questions okay so the data might be uh, mismatch from actual exam to the ppt whatever the questions that we are getting here so because the memory based questions based on that they prepared the ppt okay so the values or the final answers might change but the concept you should understand okay so yeah yeah everyone hi Cha. so without wasting much time so let's get into the topic so you know all three papers will be discussed first i'll discuss the physics then chemistry by rohit sir and then maths by subarao sir okay chal so let's get into the questions directly so concentrate here guys so from which chapters they are asking questions and what type of questions they are asking and whether the question asked was easy or moderate or difficult so coming to this shift paper that is 31st january shift one paper if we analyze that paper so most of the questions are easy okay around 18 plus questions are easy so i can consider some questions like three to four questions moderate and two to three questions difficult that's it so overall paper we can say it's easy only okay Chalo. so now so the students who prepared the uh, from ncrt or who prepared up to board level also they can attempt this paper right Chalo. so let's discuss the questions one by one so the first question is from class 12th modern physics so the stopping potential is 8 volts so if wavelength of the instant light is lambda and it is 2 volts for 3 lambda so then find the threshold wavelength so the threshold wavelength in the sense lambda naught we have to find so here consider this question in two cases like the first case in the case one so if the incident wavelength is lambda so if the incident wavelength is lambda so then the stopping potential is the stopping potential is 8 volts 8 volts is a stopping potential so then so case 2 if the incident wavelength is 3 lambda then so the stopping potential is 2 volts the stopping stopping potential 2 volts so now the simple concept so we know the formula the energy the incident energy will be utilized in overcoming the work function of the metal and the remaining energy will be used to accelerate the electrons right so which is the ke max right accelerate the electrons which are ejected out from the metal surface so this is a basic equation so this equation you can write it in terms of so in place of e i can write hc by lambda because they gave the incident wavelength hc by lambda is equals to phi so plus so the ke max so in place of ke max i'll write in terms of stopping potential because they gave stopping potential e v naught so this basic equation if you remember so this question is pretty easy so for the first one you can write the hc by wavelength instant wavelength lambda is equals to so the phi plus so this is 8 volts so then i can write this as 8 so let it be the equation number one then similarly here so the metal is same so the work function will be same the same metal but two different incident wavelength lights are incident on the met metal surface so here hc by the wavelength is 3 lambda hc by 3 lambda is equals to metal same so the work function i am taking same and the 
stopping potential 2 volts so let it be equation number 1 let it be the equation number 2 so equation 1 and equation 2 so that's it right so now you can solve these two equations you can just solve these two equations and get the value so if you see the final thing that we have to find is the threshold wavelength so the phi is equals to hc by lambda naught so the phi is equals to hc by lambda naught so from here you can just uh, uh, do some calculations here so let me multiply this with uh, divide this with uh, 3 because this becomes hc by 3 lambda so this is phi by 3 plus this becomes 8 by 3 and this equation is already hc by lamb 3 lambda is equals to 5 plus 2 so now simply you subtract these two equations so hc by 3 lambda hc by 3 lambda gets cancelled so 5 by 3 minus 5 overall we get so 5 if you do uh, let it be equation 1 the modified equation 1 so then if you do 1 minus 2 so then we get 5 by 3 minus 5 and uh, this is however 0 and 8 by 3 minus 2 is equals to 0 so from here you'll get the value of 5 right so if you get pi 5 value then you can substitute it here so what is this one you know that 12400 by so the lambda naught so from here the lambda naught will become 12400 by so whatever the phi that you get here you substitute it here okay so that we get the final wavelength in angstroms as 12400 angstrom this comes out to be somewhere around one clear this part understood guys everyone so the basic question from modern physics so i can consider this as easy question so those who did, those who did questions related to the photoelectric effect they can solve this question very easily because there are only some four to five models of questions in photoelectric effect okay so one of them and one of the famous questions from photoelectric is this type only clear done next so that's the first question so now the second question it is from the units and measurements so if you guys observe from every sh for every shift we are getting one question from units and measurements so whether it can be of dimensions otherwise whether it can be of error analysis or it can be of uh, related to instruments okay so like vernier calipers so now try to solve this question if the percentage error in measuring the length and diameter of the wire is 0.1 percent each so then the percentage error of the resistance here which terms we have to relate the resistance term the length term and the diameter term so how do you write the resistance in terms of the length and diameter so from current electricity so grade 10th level also you learned so the r is equals to rho l by a so rho is however constant so now if i apply the error analysis so the delta r by r percentage so we need the percentage error in the resistance so however this is constant delta rho by rho percentage will be zero so then delta l by l percentage plus the delta a by a percentage you guys know how to write the error analysis right so the area of the wire so if you take the resistor or resistance of a wire let's say this has the radius r so then area will become pi r square so in place of this delta a by a if you write the pi r square so d phi by d phi which is zero so then we have only so we can write two into d r delta r by r in place of delta a by a you can write two into delta r by r so however phi is a constant right so that i am writing here so delta l by l percentage plus delta a by a in place of that i can write delta r by r what is this r it's a radius so but here they gave diameter so the diameter or the radius if the diameter decreases by 0 0.1 percent so obviously radius also will uh, there will be error in 0 0.1 percent right so then this is one percent plus 
2 into so this is 1 percent so 1 percent plus 2 into 1 percent so overall 1 plus 2 the 3 percent is a uh, to 0 0.1 right sorry 0 0.1 and 2 into 0 0.1 so this becomes 0 0.3 percent so option a is the correct one guys done <coughs> so take this one so the next one second year so that is the semiconductors again from semiconductors i can say that the difficult part is already deleted the transistors part so now we have only the basic basics of semiconductors that is types of semiconductors and the logic gates right Chal. so analyze this circuit first so what are the different gates that are given so this is the not gate and this is also the not gate and this is nand gate this is end and this is not so overall it's a nand gate now so the input for this one here the input is a so a not which is a bar right so here b is the input and here is the not gate so we get output as b bar so now a bar is going input to the nand gate b bar is going input to the nand gate from here a bar from here b bar are the inputs right Chal. now so end first do the end part then keep not end means what end is nothing but the output will be a dot a bar dot b bar this is the end and for overall keep not so then this is not okay Chal. now so the final output that we are going to get a bar into b bar overall ball so but here we have to represent it in terms of gate so then i can write so uh, do the boolean algebra so a bar whole bar d borgans law i'm applying so a bar whole bar and here into is there this comes plus so b bar whole bar so a bar a double bar will become a and b double bar will become b so what is a plus b a plus b is nothing but r a plus b is a r which is option d clear understood guys easy question from the logic gates Chalo. so done so next let's move on to the next question so this question is from the magnetic field moving charges and magnetism magnetism part so here you could see that the magnetic field is given as a vector and an electron is moving with a velocity the velocity vector is given if it experiences the force this much and what is the value of n so when a charged particle is placed in the magnetic field it experiences the magnetic force so what is the magnetic force formula that we have so which is q into v cross b right so this is the basic formula q v b sin theta or q into v cross b so now here the charge particle is electron the charged particle is electron it is placed in the magnetic field vector is given and its velocity is given vector that's why i'm taking the formula in vector form now so the force will be equals to so in place of q i'll write electron e into so what is v so the v is 4 i cap plus 3 j cap cross the cross product a cross b what is b so b naught i cap plus 2 b naught j cap plus 2 b naught j cap right Chal. so now f the force is equals to e into so now do the cross multiplication you know that multiply 4 i with these two and multiply 3 j cap with these two okay so here 4 i cross 4 i cap cross b naught i cap so i cross i zero however so then 4 i and 2 b naught so 4 into 2 b naught which is 8 b naught and you know what is i cross j i j k so what is i cross j i cross j is k cap 
find. So then, 3j cap with this, we multiplied these two. Next, with 3j cap, multiply these two as well. So 3j cap into b0 i cap. So first, 3 into b0. So 3 b0. And then, so j cross i. So what is j cross i? j cross i is minus k. So minus k cap. So this is plus. So and j cross j, however, 0. So then, so f is equals to e into, so this comes out to be 8 b0 k cap minus 3 b0 k cap. This minus I am multiplying here. So 8 minus 3, it's going to be, so 8 minus 3, so which is going to be 5. So 5 b0 k cap. Right? So then the f is equals to 5 e b0 k cap. So in the question, if you observe, they gave the force equation. So what's the force equation? So that is N E B naught K cap, which is equals to phi E B naught K cap. So now if you just check or compare, so here I can write the N will be equals to phi. So that's the answer. So the N is equals to phi. Clear? Done? So, the another question which is from the NLM and friction concept. So, here find the value of small m if capital M is 10 kg and acceleration of blocks are 2 meter per second square. So, here more inclined is this side. So, that means this is 2 meter per second square and it is also accelerates upward 2 meter per second square. The basic understanding. All the surfaces are rough. So with coefficient of friction, mu is equals to 0 0.5. Fine. So now, overall, you can write like, so the F net is equals to the net mass into acceleration. Okay. So here, here, I can multiply, sorry, I can write the whole forces which are acting on these objects in this form. What are the net forces that are acting? You know that this side mg sin 53, mg sin 53 and this side mg sin 37, this is capital M and this is small m, mg sin 37. You know that on the inclined plane, its weight acts, the sine component of the weight will come. And uh, here this side mg sin 37. Now, so as the object moves this side, right, sorry, this side, accelerate this side. So the friction will act here like this. And then, so here the friction will act this side because the acceleration is upward. Right. So then the overall forces that I can write. So the frictional force in this case, the kinetic friction will act because the blocks are accelerating the kinetic friction. So you know the kinetic friction formula mu mg cos theta. So now overall forces that I can write it as. So mg sin 53. mg sin 53 is one force. And then so next uh, we have this one, the kinetic friction. So what's the kinetic friction? Mu m. So what is capital M? So let's write capital M. Mu mg cos theta. So cos 53. And similarly, so these two done and come 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 to this place so here the friction what's the friction mu so the mass is small m into so g into cos 37 there done minus so mg sin 37 mg sin 37 right so which is equals to so f net is equals to m net what is the net mass capital m plus small m into the acceleration. What is the acceleration? A is equals to 2. So this is the overall equation. So if you can write this, you can easily solve. So here the confusion is whether to take the mu as 0 0.5 or 0 0.25. Some co some students said it's a 0 0.25 or 0 0.5. So I'm not going for the complete calculation because here this value is 0 0.5 or 0 0.25. We don't know exactly. 
okay so you just substitute the values overall forces i represented the equation so here first thing writing the overall forces just understand f net is equals to m net into a the right hand side part you already understood clearly the net mass is capital m plus small m into the acceleration they both are moving with the acceleration with the two right hand side part pretty easy so lhs side what is the net force that is acting so here this for this capital m mass so mg and its sine component will come this side and for this small m its weight component mg sin 37 will come along the inclined plane these two are clear now as capital m is accelerating downward so the frictional force will be upward and here the capital m is small m is accelerating upward so the friction will be downside so that's why minus friction and minus friction friction see here minus friction and minus friction so friction formula you know the kinetic friction mu mg cos theta so just i substituted those values okay so now you guys can take the mu value as 0 0.25 or 0 0.5 so then substitute you know the capital m which is 10 kg so now we have to find small m we know the a we know capital m and we know g value we know the mu value uh, what else sin 53 you know cos 53 you know cos 37 you know sin 37 you know so the only unknown will be the small m okay so you can find the small m so as per students they are saying it's a 4.5 kg so i'm considering it as 4.5 because i don't know the exact value whether it is 0 0.5 or 0 0.25 the mu value so you guys can take both okay so where you are getting the correct answer you can just check done Chalo. good hmm. so this question is from fluid mechanics so surface tension a steel ball is dropped in glycerin liquid from rest so then draw its velocity time graph so when a ball is dropped in any liquid here the glycerin liquid is given so then what happens its acceleration will be constant so then after some time so its speed will become constant right so first its speed increases like this so then its speed becomes constant so where you could see this graph so the option a itself this is a direct question done Chala. so the next question so a tuning fork vibrates in resonance with the first overtone frequency of the open argon pipe so the first one it's a open argon pipe so for the open argon pipe you guys know the fundamental frequency right so the fundamental frequency f naught is equals to v by 2l so they are saying it's a first overtone it is, res is in resonance with the tuning fork so the first overtone that is f1 is equals to so 2 into v by 2l 2 into v by 2l so now the let the tuning fork has the frequency the frequency f so where that f i am writing it as 2 into v by 2l let it be now the second scenario the same tuning fork so that means the tuning fork which is having the same frequency f is in resonance with the closed argon pipe so let's take <laughs> closed argon pipe mahi the student mahi actually i could not see all the comments here because the live is going in multiple channels okay sir can i eligible for je if i study academic year two times that means two years oh, you can take the drop and you can study right you are eligible to write take the drop here okay so then for the closed argon pipe you know that f f naught the fundamental frequency will be v by 4 l so let the here uh, length at which length the resonance is happening let the length be l1 here so for the closed argon pipe that length be l2 so for the same tuning fork that means for the same tuning fork it is in resonance with the uh, fundamental mode of the closed argon pipe so the fundamental mode means v by 4 l2 so let it be equation number two 
and let it be equation number 1. So, this is uh, 2 into v by 2L1. So, now equate these two. So, simply equate these two f and f. So, here I can write. So, 2 into v by 2L1 is equals to v by 4L2. So, here I can cancel 2 and 2. So, v and v because in both the cases the v is the speed of the sound. Alright. Shall. So, then L1 is equals to 4 L2. So, then L2 will be equals to L1 by 4. So, what is L1? 60 by 4. So, this is going to be 15 centimeters. So, the L2 will be equals to so the 15 centimeters. Done? Clear? See, Lakshmi Kanta. So, today's second shift will be easy or hard. You just analyze the uh, how many shifts. Now, almost we have uh, eight shifts are happen, eight shift, nine shifts happen, right? So, you can compare all the nine shifts of physics papers. So, uh, overall, the paper is easy only. You can expect the same kind of paper in the shift two as well today. Then, then, shallow. So, the next question this is a direct question. So, two rods of same length are area, so same length and area, but having thermal conductivity K1 and K2 are connected in series, then in parallel. So, find the equivalent thermal conductivity in both the cases. This is a direct formula based question. So, when they are connected in the series and when they are connected in the parallel. So, in the series case, it is going to be 2 K1 K2 by K1 plus K2, right? So, 2 K1 K2 by K1 plus K2. So, this option could be correct or this option could be correct. And in the parallel case, you know that K1 plus K2 by 2. So, in the case of series, the K equivalent, here I am not going for the derivation because this is the easiest part where the formulas you can directly remember, right? So, then the next we have the parallel case. k1 plus k2 by 2. So, then I could see the option, option C. Direct question. Chala. So, this question is from current electricity. So, again the easy question, just understand the basics of the current electricity here. So, find the equivalent resistance across A and B. So, across A and B points. So, first if you see the graph here, I can say that, so this part is fine, okay. So, just come to this part, either you solve it from this side or you solve it from this side. So, better to solve from here, okay. So, how do I solve from here? This is shorted. This resistance has no use in this circuit because it is shorted, right. See here, it is shorted this is called short circuiting right so then you can you can say that this point and this point so this 2 ohm resistor and this 2 ohm resistor they both will be in parallel these two are in parallel now so the 2 and 2 are in parallel so we get the resultant will be 1 ohm so now you can see this is 1 ohm and here we have 2 ohm so this is 1 ohm and this is 2 ohm and here we have 3 ohm and here we have 3 ohm resistor 3 ohm and 3 ohm so again you can observe here these two resistors will be in series combination these two resistors will be series combination sir chala easy questions was to not chai like both na reason madhu so just concentrate practice more questions at least for the phase two though the easy questions are coming if you are unable to do means so lack of practice especially the numericals okay so attempt more mock tests that's the only solution so 2 plus 1 3 so here 3 ohm resistor will come and here 3 ohm resistor and here one more 3 ohm resistor so 3 ohm 3 ohm and 3 ohm so this all 3 ohms are in parallel so the final r equivalent will be equals to if equal number of resistors are in parallel combination, the R equivalent will be R by N. So, what is the R? 3. 
how many resistors are in parallel three resistors so 3 by 3 1 ohm so the final answer will be 1 ohm clear done Shall. so the relation between time t and distance x is given by this equation so and alpha and beta are constants the acceleration is kinematic question so this is a bit tough question i can consider okay so those students who are perfect with the basics of kinematics and who did many questions related to the kinematics they can only solve this question okay so here i can say t is equals to alpha x square plus beta x i need acceleration so first thing is to get the acceleration i need velocity dv by dt yes or no so i need dv acceleration to get the acceleration i need velocity so how do we get velocity from here so i'll do one thing i'll differentiate it on either side so if i differentiate it becomes dt by dt and then alpha into so uh, this becomes 2x into dx by dt plus beta is a constant into dx by dt x is the differentiable term that's why x square differentiation is 2x and again differentiate that t dx by dt plus beta is a constant and dx by dt you guys know that the dx by dt is nothing but the velocity so then i can write here so dt by dt is 1 which is equals to alpha into 2x into this is velocity term plus beta into this is also the velocity so somehow i managed to get the velocity from here so here i can get 1 is equals to v i am taking common so i got 2x alpha plus beta so from here the velocity v will be equals to 1 by 2x alpha plus beta v will be equals to 1 by 2x alpha plus beta got it Chala. so now our ultimate aim is to get the a so then a is equals to so we get dv by dt then so d by dt of so 1 by x so 1 by something that is 2x alpha plus beta so then you can do this uh, basic uh, differentiation part so how do we do this one the acceleration a this will become minus 1 into 2x alpha plus beta into again d by dt of so the 2x alpha plus beta chain rule right so then the acceleration a will be equals to square my bad so then minus so in place of this whole thing so shall i substitute so the v square because v we got it as 1 by 2x alpha plus beta so here 1 by 2x alpha plus beta whole square is there so in place of this whole thing i am writing so the v square okay so then d by dt of 2x alpha plus beta so d by dt of beta is however zero so then i can write so 2 alpha into so the dx by dt right so what is 2 alpha into dx by dt is velocity so that we get minus 2 alpha v cube the final one will be 2 minus 2 alpha v cube okay so minus 2 alpha v cube just take the magnitude we got option b so 2 alpha v cube so this question is bit tricky so those who have complete knowledge on the differentiation part mathematics part and the kinematics combination <laughs> you guys just go through once see the equation is given i differentiated that from there i got the velocity equation so then the acceleration is equals to dv by dt so then i differentiated that the understanding is easy here related to this question but the calculation part you guys should be perfect in the uh, differentiation part especially the chain rule part here done clear Chal. next so we have one more question so this is from uh, wave optics two sources have intensities ratio 1 is to 9 okay 
so let it be the intensity i1 let it be the intensity i2 so when the sources are incoherent so the resultant intensity is i1 so if the sources are uh, coherent the phase difference of 60 resultant intensity is i2 so then the ratio of i1 to i2 is given something so then they are asking us to find value of x okay so good morning Chal. so see here I can simply write first the basic formula for the incoherent sources the resultant intensity will be simply the algebraic sum of the individual intensities okay for the incoherent sources so when the sources are incoherent so then the intensity that they said i1 right so let's say the intensity the co incoherent sources the intensity i1 so which is simply i1 plus i2 so don't get confused this one is let's write uh, here don't write i1 i2 so let it be a b better so i a plus i b because here they gave i1 right so the resultant intensity i'm taking i1 when the sources are incoherent so i a plus i b so what is i a 1 i b 9 so the total so 1 plus 9 so this is going to be 10 so the i1 is equals to 10 let it be equation number 1 okay so then so when the sources are coherent when the sources are coherent so the resultant intensity can be calculated using the formula i1 plus i2 plus root 2 root i1 i2 so cos phi vector sum right so then we write here so the i a better okay so i one means here i a so which is one plus nine plus two into square root of so one into nine one into nine into cos 60 degrees done so now so i can write the i resultant in the second case the coherent case that they said i2 so i am writing i2 is equals to so 1 plus 9 10 plus 2 into this part is uh, 3 and then so cos 60 1 by 2 1 by 2 2 cancel so this part is 3 so the i2 will be 13 so now i got i2 as 13 i1 as 10 so now they gave i1 by i2 ratio so i can write the i1 by i2 ratio will be equals to 10 by 13 10 by 13 so now in the question they said i1 by i2 ratio is 10 by x so 10 by x is equals to 10 by 13 so from here you can write what is x so the x is equals to 13 done the x is equals to 13 option b is the correct answer Chalo. next question uh, so this is one more easy question so here the process they said isobaric for two different isobaric curves vt curves are given find the relationship between p1 and p2 so the basic thing the isobaric means the pressure is constant if the pressure is constant then i can write so you know that pv is equals to nrt right if i differentiate it on either side so i can write p is the constant then i get dv by dt so then nr is the constant then i get dt by dt right so then i can write here so the dv by dt is equals to dt by dt is 1 so which we get nr by p so what is dv by dt what is dv by dt dv by dt is nothing but slope of vt curve so the slope of vt curve is inversely proportional to the pressure p the slope is inversely proportional to the pressure p according to this equation so now you compare for whichever these two graphs the slope is more so then that will have less pressure right so you can see that the slope of the p2 is greater than slope of p1 so the slope of p2 is greater than slope of p1 right so that's why 
so this one uh, the slope is inversely proportional to p so obviously i can say that the p1 will be greater than that of the p2 so the final answer will be p2 greater than p1 the p1 will be greater than p2 option b is the correct one done shall so this question is also easy one shall next ha huh. so this is from the electrostatics part so there are two charges q and 3q so let's say the charge q is here and the other charge 3q is here right so then they are separated by a distance r so let the distance between them is r so now the electric field is zero the net electric field is zero at a distance x from the o so at a distance x from the o let's say this point is o consider this point is o so from here let's say x distance so if this distance is x then this distance will be obviously r minus x so here the electric field is zero so at this point the electric field consider a positive small charge here so due to this plus q let the electric field be e1 this side so due to this plus 3q so the electric field e2 this side so the net electric field at this point is zero means the magnitude of e1 should be equals to the magnitude of e2 the net electric field is zero means the electric field acting at this point should be zero like e1 and e2 should be equal right then only the net will be zero so the e1 is due to plus q charge e2 is due to 3q charge <coughs> you know the electric field due to <laughs> sorry <laughs> so you guys know that the electric field due to the point charge is kq by r square right so now i can write so the e1 is due to the q charge k q by it is at a distance x so x square so whereas e2 is due to 3q charge k into 3q by so what's the distance from here to here r minus x so i can write r minus x whole square right so kq kq cancel so then if you cross multiply we'll get 3x square is equals to r minus x whole square so from here so we need what we need the value of x so then i can write so the x square is equals to r minus x whole square by 3 so or else i can write it as x is equals to r minus x by root 3 so this is a final value clear so the concept is very easy so this question comes under easy category only done cha next so the next question find the minimum deviation in a prism if refractive index is given so if the refractive index mu is equals to cot a by 2 so here a represents the angle of prism so what we have to calculate so the minimum deviation so the del minimum for the prism which is 2 i not minus a where a is a angle of prism so in the case of prism so this is a angle of prism right so now this is a incident ray for the perpendicular so this is a i not incident so then it refracts like this and then it refracts like this so this is r by uh, let's say this is r by 2 or a this is r by 2 right so this whole uh, this is a angle of emergence which is again i not angle of incidence will be equals to angle of emergence so then apply the snell's law at this interface let the let this one be the interface one so now apply the snell's law at this place one into so the sin i not is equals to let the refractive index of this one be mu so i can write so the mu into so the sin here this could be uh, a by 2 right this one a by 2 a by 2 right 
this is a by 2 and this is a by 2 yeah so mu into sin a by 2 so from here i can say that 1 into sin i naught is equals to mu in place of mu i can write cot of a by 2 into sin a by 2 so the cot of a by 2 means cos a by 2 by sin a by 2 so then i can write sin i naught is equals to so here sin a by 2 sin a by 2 gets cancelled so we get cos a by 2 right so then do the simple calculations we get the i naught is equals to pi by 2 minus a by 2 basic calculations we just converted this one to sine to the cos okay so then uh, i naught we got so substitute that i naught value here so 2 into so what is i naught pi by pi minus a by 2 overall i can write pi minus a by 2 minus a so here 2 2 gets cancelled pi minus a minus a which becomes pi minus 2a that's it okay so this question is also i can consider so some moderate to difficult level question okay so those who did ray optics perfectly they can solve this question done clear hmm. so this question is from the gravitation which is the easy one see here they said there are four masses four equal masses that are kept at the corners of the square side a so this is the square of side a a a a so now at all the four corners the masses equal masses m m and m are placed now so if the net gravitational force on the mass on one mass any one mass what is the net gravitational force let's consider this mass okay so the force due to this mass will be f the force due to this mass will be f right so and the force due to this mass will be f right so the three forces which is f this side and f this side and so another f this side so shall i say that the net force will be equals to so the resultant of this f and f will be f root 2 the f net will be equals to f plus f root 2 f plus f root 2 so what is this f the net force formula so f is equals to g m square by the distance it is a square so done that's it the f net is equals to here i can take f common so 1 plus root 2 right f plus root 2 so then the f net is given what is this one 2 root 2 plus 1 by 32 into so the g m so this is f root 2 so 2 2 root 2 yeah so g m square by l square so just you guys can compare now so you you know what is this f formula so the f is g m square by a square is equals to 1 plus so the 2 root 2 so then we got here 2 root 2 plus 1 by 32 into so g m square by l square so everything here here it is same just compare the denominators so i can write 32 l square is equals to a square i need value of a in terms of l i need value of a in terms of l so simply get the a value in terms of l that's it clear understood everyone so understand the basic concept that's it okay so i we calculated the net forces acting on one mass so the force f this side and f this side so the resultant will be f root 2 so the net force will be f root 2 plus f that's it so this question is also the easy one hmm. so this question is from the modern physics if mass defect in a nuclear reaction is this much and then find the value of q so you always know that the q delta q is equals to delta m into c squared the mass defect is already given so 0 0.4 grams which is nothing but 0 0.4 into 10 to the power minus 3 into what is c value 3 into 10 to the power 8 whole square direct formula based question so i can write here 0 0.4 into 10 to the power minus 3 
into 9 into 10 to the power 16. So this comes out to be 3.6 into 10 to the power 13. So this is a delta Q. Clear? Sure. Hmm. So a current carrying wire is placed in external magnetic field as shown in the figure. So find the magnetic force on the wire. So when a wire is placed in a magnetic field, so the force acting on it will be equals to I into L cross B. If a charged particle is placed in a magnetic field, this is wire. If a charged particle is placed in the magnetic field, so then you know the formula that F is equals to Q into V cross B. Understand the difference. So this is when a charged particle is placed in the magnetic field. So this formula is when a current carrying wire is placed in the magnetic field. So now you could see that the current I where this length L is the effective length. So this should be till here. So this is the A point. Let's say this is a B point. So this whole wire is placed in the magnetic field now. Okay. So I just need the effective length. So what is the effective length between the end points? So this is the effective length. So if this radius is R, so from here to here it is R and from here to here it is R. So the overall it is going to be 2R right from here to here. It is going to be 2R. So that means, so this one, this L is nothing but the L effective we should take. So now I can write F is equals to in this particular scenario, the L effective is 2R. So just substitute the value I into in place of L 2R into B. So which is nothing but so F is equals to 2IBR. If they give the values, you can put substitute the values. Otherwise, you can choose the answer directly. Done. Huh. So the next question. So this question is from the capacitors. So a parallel plate capacitor separation between them is 5 mm. Uh, separation between the plates is 5 mm. Is charged by battery. If the charge on the capacitor is Q. So now if the electric slab of thickness 2 mm is filled with uh, between the plates, so then the charge increases by 25%. So find the dielectric constant of the slab. See. So let's say this is a capacitor, let's say it is connected to a battery. So now, so when the separation between the plates is 5 mm, it is charged. So let's say the capacitance is equals to C. So then you, you know that the C is equals to Q by V. So from here, I can write Q is equals to CV. So that let it let it be this one. So sorry. Right? Huh. So now, the second case, let the charge be Q for this one. So now, if a dielectric slab of thickness 2 mm is placed between the plates, so here the dielectric slab is placed. So now, it is charged, same battery is connected. So now, it is uh, the charge increases to 25%. So that means the Q dash is equals to 25% means 1.25 times the previous one. 1.25 times the previous one. So here, let's say the capacitance is C dash. So which is the charge Q dash by the battery voltage is same. So I can put the battery voltage as same here. Right? Shall. Next. So from here I can write, so the Q is equals to CV and then here Q dash is equals to C dash into V, right? Q is equals to CV and here Q dash is equals to C dash V. So then I can write, take the equation. So better, the let's divide these two equations. I can write the Q by Q dash is equals to CV by C dash V. So then I can write Q by what is Q dash, which is 1.25 times a Q, right? So then I can write this as, so V, V cancel C by C dash. 
so then q q also cancel this becomes 1 by 5 by 4 4 by 5 is the equals to c by c dash so now the thing is what is c and what is c dash so the c is the capacitance when there is no dielectric placed so the capacitance with without dielectric is epsilon naught a by d and the capacit c dash is the capacitance when the dielectric is placed so if the dielectric is placed so it becomes epsilon naught a by d minus t minus uh, t by k that's it so epsilon naught a by d minus t minus t by k right done clear guys minus or plus sorry this formula is plus yeah so now you can substitute it here we got the c by c dash is equals to 4 by 5 c by c dash is equals to 4 by 5 so substitute the values what is c epsilon naught a by d by what is c dash epsilon naught a by d minus t plus t by k so which is equals to 4 by 5 so now do the calculations so this part it will go up so d minus t plus t by k is equals to d which is equals to 4 by 5 so then substitute the values so you know the uh, the huh. so what is the thickness you know and what is the distance between the plates you know so d is 5 mm t is 2 mm so just substitute the values so d is 5 mm the distance between the plates and the thickness t is 2 mm so just substitute d and t values here so the only unknown is k so calculate the k value that's it smiling bamboo what's your name mera nahi name lijiye sir your name is not there hmm? done this question so this is a uh, bit tricky question so i can consider it as moderate so those students who did battery charged and discharged questions they can solve this question easily right Shall. so this question we don't know whether this has come in the examination or not so but uh, this it is there in the ppt as per the main channel so let's discuss this question as well so a block of mass 50 kg is thrown horizontal ground with a speed 0 0.4 meter per second find the work done on the block until it comes to rest see so the work done is equals to the energy like and yes or no the work is equals to energy is equals to the heat released so here the work done will be equals to i can simply say the kinetic energy the energy which energy it will have the moving body kinetic energy so substitute the values half into mass is 50 kg velocity is 0 0.4 whole square so just you do the calculation so next so a particle performs simple harmonic motion with amplitude a its speed is tripled at the instant a it is at a distance 2 a by 3 from the equilibrium position so the new amplitude of the motion will be see here this is the main position the right extreme and the left extreme so let's suppose the shm it is performing from the main position so at a distance at some distance x is equals to 2a by 3 let's say the particle has initially the velocity v so after that its speed is tripled you know the velocity formula right so the velocity v is equals to omega into square root of a square minus x square so here consider two different scenarios so in the first scenario when it is at a distance x the velocity is v so in the second scenario when it is at a distance x the velocity has become 2a by 3 no, sorry uh, tripled 3v so in the first scenario i am writing the formula v is equals to omega into square root of a square minus the x square what is the x square at a distance 2a by 3 whole square right so this becomes v is equals to omega into square root of so here a square minus 4a square by 9 a square minus 4a square by 9 so now 
let it be the equation number one now the second scenario that is so the same particle when it is at a distance 2a by 3 its speed has become 3v when the speed changes obviously the amplitude changes so here the amplitude let it be the a dash so here the speed will become v is equals to uh, the speed 3v is equals to because it is tripled so 3v is equals to omega into square root of let the new amplitude a dash a dash square minus x square so here x is what 2a by 3 so just substitute 3v is equals to omega into so the a dash square is z minus x square what is x so which is 2a by 3 whole square which is 4a square by 9 so now what you do is in place of this v i am substituting this one 3 into substitute this one here 3 into so omega into square root of a square minus 4a square by 9 is equals to omega into square root of a dash square minus 4a square by 9 so just do these calculations and get the a dash value clear square it on both the sides and get the a dash value done guys understood a dash you will get in terms of a easy question shall next hmm. so for the following equation force equation is given now find the dimensions of b square by a so here you can apply the principle of homogeneity according to the principle of homogeneity so we can say that the dimensions of f will be equals to the same dimensions as of ax square s and the dimensions of f must be equals to the dimensions of b into t to the power 1 by 2 okay so now i need the dimensions of b square by a so what i am doing is the b is equals to force upon t to the power 1 by 2 force upon t to the power 1 by 2 so but i need b square so let's do square on either side b square is equals to f square by t to the power 1 by 2 into 2 so which becomes b square is equals to f square by t now i need b square by a so then what i will do b square by a is equals to f square by t into a just i multiplied a uh, divided either side with a simple thing nothing you know that the dimensions of f must be equals to ax square and the dimensions of f must be equals to b into t to the power 1 by 2 according to the principle of homogeneity right so now from here b is equals to f by t to the power 1 by 2 now i need b square so squaring on either side so i got f square by t i need b square by a so i divided either side with a right so now so b square by a dimensions will be equals to f square so the force dimensions are f l t to the power minus 2 whole square right so by so t is t into a so the a dimensions that i can write it as or else better let's uh, calculate at the end don't substitute dimension now so just let it be f square itself so f square by t into in place of a i am writing f by x square in place of a i am writing f by x square so in place of a i am writing f by x square x square will go up so 1f 1f cancel so the dimensions of b square by a will be equals to f x square by t so now you substitute the dimension formulas so you know that the force is ml t to the power minus 2 into x square which is l square by the t so this becomes m l cube t to the power minus 3 m l cube t to the power minus 3 is the correct answer done sure so that's it guys from my end so this is 
uh, the shift one paper of 31st January. So the shift two paper of 31st January will discuss today evening. Okay, at 6 p.m. So hope you guys understood these questions. The just uh, some data might be wrong here. So but you just understand the concept behind the questions and what kind of questions they are asking from each chapter you should analyze. Okay. Chalo guys. So now Rohit sir will continue the chemistry. So we'll meet in the evening session. So bye guys. Hello, 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 welcome, welcome back to Physics Wala. Right. Is my voice clearly audible, everyone? Right. So let us uh, start discussion of attempt one, 31st January 2024. We shall uh, look at the chemistry paper first. We will be looking at inorganic chemistry. Okay. Right. So let us begin with the inorganic chemistry part. See, the first question which says, which of the following options uh, contain amphoteric oxides only? This is from class 11 P block elements, direct straightforward from your NCRT textbook, right? So SNO2 is amphoteric, but SiO is acidic in nature. This is acidic in nature. So this should not be our test, uh, our uh, option. Then we have SiO2, which is also acidic in nature. SNO2 and PbO2 both are amphoteric in nature. Carbon monoxide is neutral, right? So we have the correct answer for this question as option C. If the wavelength, yeah, we have this question. The person who has asked, Secret Shairi, uh, if the wavelength of first member of Lyman series is lambda, then the second Lyman uh, is okay. That we will do. We will do it. Okay, right. Next one, how many of the following compounds have sp3 hybridization in the central atom? See, oxygen uh, with water molecule, it has two bond pairs and two lone pairs. So we have two plus two arrangement, which means the hybridization is going to be sp3, right? Next one, ammonia molecule, three bond pairs, three bond pairs and one lone pair, which means we have three plus one arrangement over here, which is again four hybridization is sp3 again then we have sio2 sio2 over here silicon is covalently linked like this with a single bond see it has a network covalent network like this so you can find one silicon having four bonds here also the hybridization of silicon is sp3 okay don't uh, think it like SI double bond on double bond or hybridization should be uh, SP. No, that is wrong. Please refer to the NCR textbook again. This is again from your textbook again, right? So we have carbon monoxide, carbon monoxide, carbon is SP hybridized anyways. BF3, uh, boron, outer electrons are three, geometry is trigonal, planar, hybridization is SP2. So how many of uh, these we have got as SP3? H2O, NH3, SiO2, right? We have also SO2. Let us look at SO2 also. So SO2 has six outer electrons, six. Oxygen, one sigma, one pi. Second oxygen, one sigma and one pi. So bond pairs are two, lone pairs, one. So S double bond O, double bond O, and there is a lone pair. So arrangement is two plus one over here, which is three. Hybridization is again sp2. Right, so the correct answer for this question is H2O, NH3 and SiO2, that's it. So we have option B as our correct answer, right? So I hope uh, I'm clear with this. Moving on to the next question after this, the compound which is white in color, the compound which is white in color zinc in, in aqua solution, obviously, zinc sulfate is white in color. Now, copper sulfate when put in water, it becomes blue because it is blue vitriol. Next one, FeSO4, when it is put in water, it becomes green, green vitriol, isn't it? 
FeCl3 it becomes yellowish orange right so the correct answer for this question is option A right now moving on to the next question after this decreasing order of electron gain enthalpy of the following elements just the magnitude okay right so which is uh, having the highest value of electron gain enthalpy is not asking about the negative sign okay only the magnitude among all these fluorine has the highest electron gain enthalpy so your answer should start with c you just have only one option which is c right simple okay so we have c and then after fluorine we have bromine sulfur and argon c b a d okay right yes welcome 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 kevin right so let us start solving the questions okay now color of lead 2 iodide pbi2 is yellow in color memory uh, based question is th this one there is no logic involved so pbi2 is uh, yellow in color now moving on to the next one moving on to the next one magnetic behavior of ni2 plus with coordination number 4 with a strong field ligand okay now what is the electronic configuration of nickel nickel is argon 4s2 3d8 ni2 plus is argon 4s0 3d8 okay now normally the d8 would appear to you like this see the d8 configuration 1 2 3 4 and 5 now we have electrons filled like this 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 this is the normal state okay since it is uh, having a strong field ligand with it it is having a strong field ligand forced pairing should occur right so uh, you are going to pair it up like this 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 right so these two electrons would be paired up do you have any unpaired electron now in the presence of a strong field ligand there is no unpaired electron so this is going to be a diamagnetic compound diamagnetic compound that's it as simple as that now moving on to the next question see noble gases have see it is uh, see what has been asked noble gases have very high boiling point do you think so this itself is wrong noble gases have very instead of high it should be very low boiling point so assertion is wrong now noble gases have weak dispersion forces that do not have hydrogen bonding at all so they have weak dispersion forces so assertion is wrong reason is correct the answer should be option d d for dog d for donkey right now next one next question after this which of the following does not give color with concentrated h2so4 see this is from salt analysis salt analysis chapter okay now uh, what we have learned in salt analysis there would be different different groups group one group two group three group four etc and so on in group one we have tests for dilute hcl and dilute h2so4 group two we have tests for concentrated H hcl or concentrated h2so4 right so the ions which are present in group two would be chloride bromide iodide uh, nitrate oxalate etc these ions are uh, present isn't it so if you have bromide when it reacts with concentrated h2so4 it produces br2 which means you would be getting red brown vapors next uh, nitrate this would produce no2 gas it is going to be again brown vapors iodide ion produces iodine which would be violet in color so fluoride is not there it will not give the test for fluoride so the correct answer for this question is going to be option b b for ball right now next one next question total number of stereoisomers total number of stereoisomers which means uh, it should be geometrical as well as optical right so now next one see uh, pt en2 cl2 this is a square I uh, mean sorry this one this would bond uh, one en would bond two bonds and here you have two so that uh, geometry is going to be octahedral you are going to represent it in this way right so e1 en over here 
one EN over here bonded like this, another EN over here bonded like this, and then we have two chloride ions, right? Cl and Cl. Okay. Now just put a mirror in between, mirror in between. Okay. When you put a mirror in between, you would be getting the counterpart. The mirror image should be non-superimposable. So the EN part, this EN would appear over here and uh, this EN would appear over here and chloride and chloride would be at the opposite. Chloride and chloride, right? So these two are uh, ge optical isomers. Do we have any geometrical isomer out of this? See, uh, let us consider this part. This is our cis form. We have another form which is going to be called as trans form. Okay, see we have PT and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Let us put EN over here, first EN over here and second EN over here and then we will put CL and CL. So this is our trans form. Okay, this is cis form. This is also cis form. So the two cis forms would have optical isomerism whereas the trans form does not have uh, an optical isomer because when you put a mirror, you are not going to get a non superimposable mirror image so the number of the number of isomers stereo isomers are two cis i mean one cis is going to be dextro rotatory the other one levo rotatory and the other one trans with zero optical activity so the number of opt uh, stereo isomers are going to be three okay right next one next question after this Next question. No, 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 Kevin, it is three, it's not two. Okay, right. Next question after this. Chromate is square planar in shape. Chromate actually appears as CrO4 minus 2. If you open your NCRT textbook, class 12 DNF block elements from uh, that part where we have potassium dichromate. There we have the structure of chromate also. Chromate structure would appear like this. C double bondo, double bondo, and then O minus and O minus. This is going to be tetrahedral. Tetrahedral, right. So chromate is tetrahedral. It is not square planar. So A is wrong. Dichromate is formed from chromate ion in acidic medium. See, chromate ion is CrO4 minus 2. Dichromate ion is Cr2O7 minus 2. Okay, right. So this would be formed uh, in acidic medium like this. You need to just balance this 2 CrO4 minus 2 CrO4 minus chromium is balanced. Oxygens, you see, 8 oxygens here, you have 7 oxygens. So you'll put 1 H2O and over here you'll put 2 H plus, right? So this particular equation which I have written is there in the NCERT textbook. Okay, so dichromate ion is formed from chromate ion uh, in acidic medium in this way. So option B is correct option, right? In a similar way, we have option C, which it says green compound of Mn is diamagnetic. See, manganese can exist like this MnO4 minus or it can exist like this MnO4 minus 2. This is permanganate, okay? permanganate which is pink in color and this one is manganate okay right manganate ion is green in color this is green in color and this one is pink in color so the green compound of manganese which means he is talking about manganate ion okay so uh, just calculate the oxidation number of manganese over here x minus x minus 8 is equal to minus 2, x value is plus 6. So the oxidation state of manganese is plus 6, which indicates uh, the electronic configuration represented like this. Normal manganese is argon 4s2, 3d5. Now we have argon 4s0, 3d1. Okay, you have removed 6 electrons out of 7. So you are just left with 1 electron. Okay. Now, do you think that this can be diamagnetic? No. See, what does the statement say? Green compound, that is manganate ion, is diamagnetic in nature. There is only one unpaired electron, which means this should be paramagnetic. Paramagnetic and this should be tetrahedral. So, 
out of these three options we have only one option which is correct it is option uh, d where it is written only b is correct okay right now next one next question shall we uh, start yeah important tips important tips see uh, you have seen as many questions as you can uh, from uh, the previous sessions all these questions are just and just directly from your ncr textbook even this shift right so please please be thorough with your ncr textbook as much as you can your um, with respect to the inorganic chemistry part nothing is going out of ncrt at least organic and physical also are like that this year so everything is directly from your ncrt those who are completely thorough with the ncrt you can score very good marks in chemistry okay right now next one next one see the next question the spin only magnetic moment of ni nh3 6 2 plus here the oxidation state of nickel is plus 2 and you can write it as argon 4s0 3d8 okay 4s0 3d8 and here we have 3d subshell where we have five orbitals 3d and you have eight electrons isn't it so eight electrons would be represented normally like this one two three four five six seven and eight okay now it is uh, having six ligands which means the hybridization can either be sp3 d2 or d2 sp3 right now if you force pair these electrons are you going to get two d vacant orbitals no if you force pair these electrons the uh, the vacant orbitals of 3d which is just going to be one which means this hybridization is not going to be possible the only possible hybridization is sp3d2 that would start from 4s 4p and 4d isn't it so 4s 4p and 4d this would be there uh, but you will not have any uh, d2 sp3 kind of hybridization like this right so 2 3 4 now you will be having hybridization uh, like this sp3 and d2 hybridization is sp3d2 now do you find any unpaired electrons yes two so you need to calculate spin only magnetic moment formula mu is equal to root over n into n plus 2 bohr magneton put 2 into 2 plus 2 mu is equal to root over 2 into 2 plus 2 which is 4 into root 8 which is 2 root 2 which is 2 into 1.414 approximately 2.8 bore magneton if it is with respect to the nearest integer you will put 3 as your answer that's it that is what which we have to do okay right now next one next question after this we have in organic chemistry we have completed our inorganic chemistry now we have to start organic chemistry right so the first question see see in CRT textbook we have a haloalkane alcoholic KOH what do you think when haloalkane reacts with alcoholic KOH you will be getting an alkene CH3 CH double bond CH2 right so this is our compound A next we have added HBr to this HBr there is no peroxide which means Markov Nikov's rule you are going to put bromine on the carbon having less number of hydrogens ch3 chbr single bond ch3 this is your product b on this we have added aqueous koh aqueous koh for substitution alcoholic koh for elimination so in place of br we will be getting oh so this is our product c find out the product c it is propane to all correct answer is option b straightforward simple question from halo alkanes chapter again ncrt okay right next one next question after this see the correct iupac name <laughs> iupac name we have a ketone and uh, an alcohol so ketone should get the higher preference so we will start numbering from here this is our carbon number one carbon number two three 4, 5, 6 and 7. 7 carbons are there. 
since ketone is our preferred carbon so we will write it as heptane to own heptane to own two options are there and seventh position we have hydroxy seven hydroxy heptane to own the correct answer is option a right that's it as simple as that simple questions you are getting okay now uh, this is from biomolecule see one thing if you are getting simple questions uh, don't be happy if you get difficult questions only then be happy because if you get simple questions anyone can do right so you should do what others do not do isn't it if everybody does these questions there should be very very less chance of doing another please keep that in mind uh, when you feel that the paper is simple for the upcoming uh, shift if you feel that paper is simple please be very 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 careful okay in that case if you feel that paper is coming difficult then you can uh, happily uh, attempt the questions then you will have a better advantage okay right next one see uh, glucose p plus hi red phosphorus plus hi when we add hi we are going to get n hexane so uh, p should go with two next glucose does not react with nahco3 q should go with three glucose with bromine water it will give gluconic acid r4 and uh, saccharic acid for concentrated hno3 s1 so 2 3 4 1 we have it in option a right simple right next one again directly from your ncr textbook biomolecule this one organic chemistry some basic principles and techniques from your ncr textbook adsorption method adsorption method is used in chromatography why will you use it in differential extraction or distillation or sublimation anybody can answer this right you need not have a knowledge of uh, organic chemistry some basic principles and techniques anyone can do this question so the correct answer is option a okay now pka of phenol is 10 and whereas pka of ethyl alcohol is 15.6 right the values might be a bit different ethyl alcohol it should be 15.9 or something anyways see if pka is more then acidic strength acidic strength is less acidic strength is less obviously phenol is more acidic so its pka is less okay so phenol is more acidic than ethyl alcohol that statement is correct now that converse of that ethyl alcohol is more acidic than phenol this is wrong isn't it so only statement one is correct statement two is incorrect so correct answer is option c option c okay pka of phenol is 10 it is more acidic than ethyl alcohol ethyl alcohol is more acidic than phenol it again contradicts statement one so it is wrong okay see now next question the total number of different alkanes formed from this pole base electrolysis when you take two different different uh, uh, sodium salts of carboxylic acid the free it proceeds through free radical mechanism isn't it so we are going to get a free radical of methyl in this case here you are going to get a free radical of ethyl in this case when you take two different uh, sodium salts of carboxylic acids okay now if you just take this one methyl free radical combines with another to produce this product one methyl free radical combines with another methyl free radical to produce ethane in a similar way one ethyl free radical combines with another ethyl to produce this product which is butane okay self combination self combination now third possibility cross combination so methyl and ethyl would combine with one another methyl and ethyl would combine with one another to produce the third product we have ethane we have butane and we have propane so the number of products or number of alkanes formed are equal to are equal to three the number of alkanes formed are equal to three that's it okay right now next question after this see we have ph mgbr now the acidic hydrogen gets replaced when you are adding a Grignard reagent, the CHO part remains as it is and we are going to put O- and MgBr initially and this pH part goes with uh, the benzene ring anyways, so that is not uh, required. Now, this one, on this we have added NH4Cl, isn't it? 
when we add NH4Cl, we are getting the same product again. We will be getting benzaldehyde over here and we will be getting phenol. So, how many OH groups are there? There is just one OH group. This is our product P. The number of OH groups in our product P is equal to 1. Okay, right. Next question after this. Species having carbon with sexted valence of electrons and acts as an electrophile, those which have only six electrons on carbon atom. Okay, see carb anion, carb anion. Let us say I have taken CH3 minus. Uh, it has six, I'll just put it in this way CH3 minus C, H, 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 and minus. Look at count the number of electrons around carbon. You are getting eight, so this should not be your answer. Carbo cation C H3 plus how many electrons are there around carbon? Six electrons. So your answer should be carbocation. Free radical, if you consider free radical, we have let us say C H3 and an electron. So the number of electrons are seven over here. Okay. Now next one. Nitrine has six valence electrons on nitrogen, not on carbon. He is asking with respect to carbon. Okay, right? So, our correct answer for this question is going to be carbocation. That's it. Okay. Moving on to the next part, which is physical chemistry. First question on which factor electrical conductivity of an electrolytic cell does not depend. Okay. Which factor? electrical conductivity of an electrolyte does not depend concentration it depends on concentration isn't it if you change the concentration the values of electrical conductivity will also change amount of electrolyte if amount of electrolyte added or amount of electrolyte uh, removed uh, the value that is going to be affected is concentration only isn't it so these two are similar to each other so if it depends on concentration it will depend upon amount of electrolyte also also, we have the temperature. If the value of temperature increases, kinetic energy increases, mobility of ion increases, conduction increases. So, it depends upon the temperature. What factor it does not depend, it is the nature of electrode. It does not depend on nature of electrode. Simple question. Okay. Electrochemistry. Now, see. See. Questions in JE exam are asked like this. We have methane. Methane is required for formation of CO2. From, uh, from methane, how would you form CO2? By combustion, CH4 plus O2 gives rise to CO2 plus H2O. Anyone can do this. Anyone. CH4 plus balance the CH4 plus 2O2 gives rise to CO2 plus 2 H2O. Right. So those who are in 11th standard also will do this. Those who have just started 11th class, let us say there is a person who has just started 11th standard. That person will be able to do this question. Okay, right. So here we have one mole of methane produces one mole of carbon dioxide, right? Molar mass of methane is 16 grams. 16 grams of methane produces uh, how many grams? Molar mass of carbon dioxide is 44 grams of CO2. In the question, we have 22 grams of CO2. If we have 22 grams of CO2 over here, then the number of grams of methane produced would be, this is becoming half, this will also become half. The number of grams of methane produced would be 8 grams of methane. That's it. 8 grams of methane will be produced. Okay. Now the question is, uh, this in terms of moles, convert this into moles, number of moles of methane is equal to given mass divided by molar mass of methane. Okay, so this is going to be 1 by 2, which is 0 0.5. 0 0.5. You need to express it in this way. So this would be written as 50 into 10 to the power minus 2. That's it. 5 into 10 to the power minus 1 or 50 into 10 to the power minus 2. The value of M is going to be 50. The correct answer for this question is option C. Okay, clear. Moving on to the next question after this, we have... The next one as if one Faraday of electricity is used in discharging of CO2 plus. See again, again, what a simple question. When we have CO2 plus, it requires two moles of electrons to produce one mole of CO. Okay, two moles of electrons would be for two Faraday, 
to produce one mole of copper that is going to be for 63.5 grams molar mass of copper is 63 point atomic mass of copper is 63.5 grams for two faraday if it is 63.5 the question is if one faraday if you use one faraday then how many grams how many grams 63.5 divided by 2 which is 31.75 grams that's it so nearest integer is going to be 32 grams okay right now moving on to the next question i hope uh, you are getting the solutions what is there to get anyone can do this type of uh, questions isn't it right so moving on to the next one wavelength of first transition of lyman series is lambda then the wavelength of second transition series is so somebody was asking uh, the solution to this question see very easy question wavelength lyman series has been told to you so i'll write it as new bar is equal to one by lambda one by lambda is equal to r into z square into 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square okay we will calculate the value of r in the beginning i'll take r as some x x into 1 into first transition isn't it lyman ground state is for uh, n1 is 1 first excited state is going to be 2 so 1 by 1 square minus 1 by 2 square so we have 1 by lambda for i'll just write it as uh, lambda 1 okay so 1 by lambda 1 is equal to x into 1 by 1 minus 1 by 4 which is 3 by 4 isn't it so this part would be 3x divided by 4 1 minus 1 by 4 is 3 by 4 so the value of x from this data we can get it as 4 divided by 4 divided by 3 lambda 1 okay so this is our value of x x is equal to 4 divided by 3 into lambda 1 now the question is with respect to second series again 1 by lambda 2 is equal to r into z square into 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square it is going to second transition series that means it will move from first orbit to third orbit so the value of n2 is going to be 3 so 1 by lambda 2 is equal to in place of r or x whatever you have taken in place of that you are going to write 4 divided by 3 into lambda 1 4 divided by 3 into lambda 1 okay right 3 lambda 1 z is anyways 1 so this is going to be 1 by 1 minus 1 by 9 it is 8 by 9 so 1 by lambda 2 is equal to 4 by 3 lambda 1 into 8 divided by 9 just multiply this this is 32 and this is 27 so 1 by lambda 2 is equal to 32 divided by 27 lambda 27 lambda the question is the question is to calculate the value of lambda 2 not 1 by lambda 2 so lambda 2 would be 27 by 32 into lambda right so 27 divided by 32 into lambda correct answer is option a that's it okay you just calculated the value of r over here and substitute it over there to get the new value of lambda that is what which we have done in this question okay now the next one the number of metals used in batteries are nickel cadmium cell this is again used in a battery next one manganese this is uh, dry cell primary battery primary uh, storage and this one goes for secondary storage right so these three are used uh, we don't have any use of iron and uh, chromium anywhere in the batteries so the, our correct answer for this question is going to be option i mean number which is two okay now next one next one which of the combination shows positive deviation from raoult's law positive deviation from Raoult's law see uh, in the case of a water molecule in the first option we have ethanol and water in the case of a water molecule the number of hydrogen bonds are in the case of a water the number of hydrogen bonds are equal to 4 okay and when we have an ethanol molecule the number of hydrogen bonds are 2 okay now between two water molecules between 
two water molecules if an ethanol molecule comes into the picture the number of hydrogen bonds would decrease for water molecule if the hydrogen bonds decrease the vapor pressure increase the boiling point decreases it would show positive deviation from raoult's law so ethanol and water would show positive deviation from raoult's law phenol and aniline the hydrogen bonding is going to be more uh, intense over here between these two in comparison to only phenol and only aniline uh, again these two would show negative deviation from raoult's law so you have acetone over here ch3 c double bond o ch3 and we have chloroform c h cl3 right so between these two there would be a hydrogen bonding in comparison to pure chloroform and pure acetone so the correct answer for this question is option a right so from directly from raoult's law it has been asked so expect a question from negative deviation from raoult's law in the second shift okay now next one after this a gives rise to 2p so you just need to write in terms of k simple question it is there in your ncrt so let us prove this again so a gives rise to 2p a gives rise to 2p now let us consider when time is equal to 0 the initial pressure of a as pi at initial time uh, the pressure of 2p is going to be uh, 0 right because the reaction has not yet started now at time is equal to some time t let us say uh, the reaction is moving in forward direction the pressure of p would increase that would increase by 2x how much is left over here pi minus x okay so p total at equilibrium is going to be pi minus x plus 2x this this would be p total is equal to pi plus x right so this is the value of p total now from this we can get the value of x x is equal to p total i'll just write it as pt minus pi x is pt minus pi now how would you write it for first order reaction k is equal to 2.303 by t log c naught by ct we do not have c naught over here we have p so we will write it as log initial pressure which is pi and after some time the pressure is pi minus x isn't it so pi divided by pi minus x now we have the value of x with us so we can write the value of pi minus x like this pi minus x is equal to pi minus put the value of x which is pt minus pi pi minus pt minus pi so pi minus x can be represented as pi and plus pi this would be 2 pi minus pt right so in place of pi minus x what can we write 2 pi minus pt so k is equal to 2.303 divided by t log pi divided by 2 pi minus pt so wherever we get this that is going to be our answer okay so 2.303 by t log pi divided by 2 pi 2 pi minus pt now where is log over here there is no log so this is wrong 2.303 by t log pi divided by 2 pi minus pt so when you use this one you are not going to use 2.303 isn't it this is not log base 10 log base e this one so we have here we have 2.303 by t log 2 pi no wrong so pi divided by 2 pi minus pt is our answer the correct answer for this question is option b right next one the next question see what is the expression for kc for the following reaction can the question be more simpler than this from equilibrium so you need to write concentration of products divided by the concentration of uh, reactants raised to their stoichiometric coefficients so stoichiometric coefficients in all the cases are just one so here you see two so this is wrong fescn two whole plus uh, divided by fe3 plus and scn minus this is our correct answer you are getting a square over here wrong again you have fescn two this is also wrong okay so the correct answer is option b for b for ball okay right next one find the value of delta g naught for the following reaction at 298 kelvin okay delta g naught is equal to minus 2.303 rt minus 2.303 rt log k 
right so let us uh, calculate the approximate values why approximate values because just look at the answers 200 163 143 243 the answers are far apart let us do approximation right so 2.303 into r value they have given it as 8.314 i'll take it as 25 divided by 3 okay 25 divided by 3 for easier calculations and we have temperature given to you as 298 we'll approximate it 300 okay and into log k log of what 2.47 into 10 to the bar minus 29 we will approximate again this as 2.5 into 10 to the bar minus 29 let us solve log 2.5 into 10 to the bar minus 29 first i'll write it as 25 into 10 to the bar minus 30 so this would be log 5 square plus log 10 to the power minus 30 so this is going to be 2 log 5 minus 30 log 10 okay so 2 into 0.699 or something so 2 approximately 0.7 minus 30 so this would be equal to 1.4 minus 30 30 minus 1 29 29 minus 0.4 28.6 minus 28.6 is the answer for this log value this is minus 28.6 so you will write this as minus of minus again so your answer is going to be anyways in plus 2.303 into we will cancel this out 300 times 2.303 into 25 into 100 into uh, this part we have got the answer as 28.6 okay into 28.6 right so again set of approximation over here 2 into uh, 25 right so this is 50 into 100 which is going to be 5000 into 3 which is 15000 i'm making it as 30 uh, 15000 if it is 30 it is going to be 150000 150000 right something more than 150000 should be our answer the answer for this should be 163 kilojoules per mole if you don't believe do the calculation on your own you will get this answer only so that's all i think we have completed all the questions from this particular session i hope uh, you have understood all the concepts clearly everything was from ncrt all the best for the second session those who are attempting good luck thank you have a great day within few minutes your maths faculty would be joining for maths paper discussion Hello, my dear students. Welcome to Physics Wala. Welcome to Shift 1, 31st January 2024 Mathematics Discussion. How are you all? Please respond, my dear students. Hi Shanmuka, how are you? Am I audible? Kevin, how are you, my dear Kevin? So nice. No, Kevin, no odds break time. It's a time. 
बहुत बढ़िया ग्रेट हाय बरनी हाउ आर यू मही ओके लेट्स स्टार्ट मैथमेटिक्स फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम द सेशन फ्रॉम डिटर्मिनेंट इन एस्टरडे सेशन आल्सो अ फ्यू क्वेश्चंस फ्रॉम द डिटर्मिनेंट्स विदाउट एक्सपैंडिंग राइट सो डायरेक्टली वी अप्लाइड लुकिंग एट द साइन एक्स हियर वी वांट बोथ एफ ऑफ जीरो एफ ऑफ जीरो एज वेल एज एफ डेस ऑफ जीरो First, let us find f of zero. What is f of zero? F of zero is zero two minus one, one zero four, one six minus two. So when we find its determinant, minus one times minus one times, what do you get? Minus four, minus four plus six, so plus two, plus one eight. so what we would get this is equal to 6 right so that is a two times of uh, f of 0 0 2 8 this is also 0 1 0 4 1 six minus 2 so then correct it minus 1 times <coughs> minus 4 plus 1 what do you get 8 So eight plus four twelve. Two times f of zero is twenty four. Now coming to f dash of zero, f dash of zero. So you observe f dash of zero. We will have three determinants, right? The first determinant after differentiating, after differentiating, we will put x is equal to zero. If you differentiate here. 3x square we are putting 0 it will be 0 this is also 0 because it's 6x and this is also 0 right so this is 3x square that is 0 but minus 1 will be there minus 1 will be there so the coming to the second as it is 1 0 4 no change in it and 1 6 minus 2 there is no change now coming to the second determinant so this is 0 2 0 no change And here derivative 4x, 4x. So putting x is equal to zero, zero. This is two. And derivative of four zero. And uh, no change here also. One six minus two. Last one. Zero two zero as it is. One zero four. No change in the first column as well as the second column. Now coming to the third column. Derivative three. And here derivative of three x square. So putting x is equal to zero, zero here two x that is also zero. Now we need to find it. It's a determinant. So while you are finding the determinant, once look at here, this is equal to zero, zero minus one. So minus one times it's a cofactor. What is the cofactor of minus one? So six. Now coming to here, one time this is zero. This part becomes zero. Here three times eight. Right plus three times eight. Twenty four. Eighteen. Twenty four minus six. So this is eighteen. Thirty forty two. Forty two is the answer. Okay. So of course, if you apply the simplest ways, then we can make it. So expanding the determinant. May become lengthy, right? Next, next question. Find the maximum integral value of y. Maximum value of y for which this equation. So this is like a quadratic only. Rational quadratic form is given, right? Rational uh, <coughs> quadratic expression. Rational quadratic expression. So if you observe. 
x square plus 8x plus 32 x square plus 8x plus 32 in this case determinant is equal to 64 minus 4 times 32 which is less than 0 so that means x square plus 8x plus 32 is greater than 0 for all x is belonging to r this is the most interesting and important point from quadratic expression so this is always positive there is no role of x square plus 8x plus 32 with respect to sign of this rational expression. So, we can leave it. So, just we need to look at the numerator a x square plus 2 times a plus 1 x plus 9 a plus 4 which is less than 0. Understand this is for all x is belonging to r it should be negative for all x is belonging to r a quadratic expression is a negative or positive for every x is belonging to r first and foremost point is discriminant less than 0 and at the same time that sign should coincide with the coefficient of x square. So what is the coefficient of x square coefficient of x square it should be negative. If coefficient of x, x square is a positive, it is a never be greater than 0 for every x belonging to R, right? So, that is the important point. So, you should not neglect A less than 0. So, then discriminant is less than 0. When, what is the discriminant? 4 times A plus 1 all square minus 4 times A times 9A plus 4, which is less than 0. We can cancel out A. Now, let us write 9a square would come here, here a square, so minus 8a square coming to a, here 2a, here minus 4a, so minus 2a coming to constant, it's a plus 1 which is less than 0. Then what do you get? We would get, we would get 8a square plus 2a minus 1 which is greater than 0 multiplying on both sides by a minus 1, right? What do you say, Shanmuk? So, 8a square. So, factors, 8 minus 8. So, that means 4a square, we can write directly uh, for 2 jar. So, 2a something and 4a something, which is greater than 0, but plus 2a. So, here plus 1, here minus 1. Now, you can check it. 8a square plus 4a minus 2a minus 1. So, which is a is less than minus 1 by 2 or a is greater than 1 by 4. But, a less than 0. a less than 0. Right? So, then what is the right answer? a is belonging to minus infinity to minus 1 by 2. But we want maximum integral value. What could be the maximum integral value? So, maximum integral value will be minus 1. So, maximum value in this set is minus 1. Right? That's what it is. Now, next question. f of x is equal to, so this time we got the composition of uh, two functions. All previous papers we uh, right, so most of the questions are different, not a composition, but this time we got a composition. In this composition, g of x is equal to g of x is equal to f circle f of x. What is f circle f of x? f of f of x. What does it mean? f of 4x plus 3 by 6x minus 4. So, the easiest way without any confusion is wherever x is there, we keep one bracket, don't write anything in this step. So, just keep one bracket here. But what is there in place of x, 4x plus 3, now you can just replace. That's all. That's the simplest way without any confusion. Where even we have a complex expressions inside f. That's all. Just keep one bracket wherever x is present after that replace that bracket by the given number so now let's make it directly so we are so busy right in the examination hall so we have to make a calculation right accurately and uh, within less time so that hi rohit <coughs> now let us consider x coefficient for forza for 4 jar, how much? The 16. When you take a cross multiplication, I mean LCM, 6, 3 jar, 18. So, 16 plus 18, how much? What is the 16 plus 18? So, 34. So, 34 x. Next. Coming to the constant. Here, 4, 3 jar, 12. Here, 4, 3 jar, 12 got cancelled. 
So next, 24x here. Here also 24x got cancelled. 6 threes are 18. And 18 plus 4 fours are 16. 18 plus 16 again 34. Oh, so nice. So 34 got cancelled. Hi, Yuvraj. Ah, right. So g of x is equal to f of x. So when g circle, g circle g of 4 which is equal to g circle g of g of 4 g of 4 g of x is x it's an identity function right which is 4 so again g of 4 that is 4 g of 4 is equal to 4 so that is 4 only right the moment when we get f of x is equal to i mean g of x is identity function then it's uh, it has gone Right, so composition. Next, coming to the next point, the system of linear equation always we are telling from matrices and determinants two most crucial models. One is one is adjoint or determinant properties, inverse properties. The second most crucial point is the system of equation. So this time we got system of equations. In the system of equations, I I already told you, let us use uh, last time also rank method or gauge Jordan method when you have a four, uh, more parameters, right? So let us see in this question, the system of linear equation has infinitely many solutions, as infinitely many solutions, then find 12 alpha plus 13 beta, infinitely many solutions, then case is delta, delta 1, delta 2, delta 3, all 3 must be, all 4 must be equal to 0. So that's what we have. But we want alpha. Alpha and beta both are contained in this uh, determinant. So that's why uh, you won't get directly. But let us try to get directly. Is it possible? Luckily, constant terms are not containing, right? Uh, parameter, parameter. So let us take one way. Uh, alpha, where alpha is there? Second, right? Now, let us take delta 3. So, delta 3 means 1, 2, 3. Right? 1, 2, 3. Next. Uh, minus 2, coefficient of alpha. Alpha and minus 1. And third column is constants. Minus 4, 5 and 3. Right? So, then we have only alpha directly, we will get alpha. So, let us use. Right. So, in this case, 1 time 3 alpha plus 5, 3 alpha plus 5, plus 2 times 6 minus 15, 6 minus 15, 9, minus 9, minus 4 times minus 2 minus 3 alpha. Right? So, which is equal to 0. So, this is 0. Then what do you get? 3 alpha. So, here 4 3s are 12. So, 12. 15 alpha. So, this is 15 alpha. Next, coming to the constants 5, minus 18 and plus 8. Plus 8. So, 8 plus 5. What is 8 plus 5? 13. So, 13 minus, so minus 5 which is which is equal to 0. So, alpha is equal to 1 by 3, 5, 3, 2. But we want 12 alpha. So, what is 12 alpha? So, 12 alpha is equal to 4, right? Similarly, let us use the lo another logic, right? Another logic. What is another logic? Now, the logic is, uh, let us consider the determinant which is containing only beta. So, that means I will take delta 2. Delta 2 also 0. Delta 2 means 1, 2, 3. Second, second column will be, will be replaced by constant matrix 4, 5, 3. Third as it is. What is the third? Uh, 1, your z coefficient 3, your z coefficient beta. So, that you would get directly beta. So, now let us expand over third column. That could be more easy. So, 3 times uh, minus 12 minus 5. Minus, minus 12 minus 5. So, minus 17. Minus 3 times uh, 3 minus 2, 1. Beta times, beta times 5 plus 8, right? 5 plus 8, 13, which is equal to 0. 
See, directly we got it, na? So, 13 beta, which is equal to, this is 51, 50, uh, 3, 54, yes. So, 12 alpha is 4, 13 beta is 4, uh, 54. So, 54 plus 4, 58 is the answer, okay? So, how we have used, uh, right, our noun points effectively in order to answer this question in the easiest manner, right? Uh, yes, Madhu. So, even the questions are easy, why we are not able to do? So, we know how the question is, but the calculation. So, usually we take a lengthy calculation. Suppose, uh, instead of doing a 2 minutes or 5 minutes, if you go with the calculation. And we are not trained before the examination, while we are writing a grand test exam, we need to correct our results, all these things. Right? If you go directly uh, uh, to the exam and writing, so we know the things. Right? We have acquaintance with those questions, but we are not able to do it. Right? When you look at the all questions, so most of the questions has known to me, but coming to the result, so as you said, correct? So before practice, Nanamadu, right? So before exam, the practice, what we need to make, that is important point. Okay? Right. So let's move on to the next question. See, Madhu, as you ask, Madhu, this is a... Uh, sum of the series, right? Sum of the series. When we have a sum of the series, almost all the cases, the first and foremost point which comes in our mind is, uh, what is that? Telescopic series or difference method, right? So, immediately we need to respond in that way. So, when we observe here, nth term, so tr, so nth term we will write, tn is equal to 1, 2, 3 and so on. So that means r nth term will contain n by 1 minus 3. So because 1, 1, 1, 1 common, 3 is also common. Here 1, first term containing 1 square, second term 2 square, third term 3 square. So nth term n square plus 1 power 4, 2 power 4, 3 power 4, so n power 4. So, now our target is expressing this term as a difference of two consecutive terms. That is our thought process. So, how effectively we manipulate these expressions in order to write as a difference of two common terms, right? So, that's what we are making it. N square, we need to understand this portion. So, this is like a difference of the terms. When you have a difference of the terms, but we are not getting any factors, right? But you observe, I can write it as n square minus 1 whole square minus n square. Because 3n square, no? I will give 2n square to it. So, then it is like a minus b whole square. Remaining n square minus n square, I have written. Yes, I got it. This is like x square minus y square. So, what I would get n square minus 1 plus n, n square <coughs> minus 1 minus n. Now, what is the difference of these two terms? n square minus 1 will get cancelled, right? Only 2n. So, that's why what we follow here, 1 by n square minus n plus 1 minus 1 by n square, n square minus uh, plus n minus 1. Let us write reverse. This is a plus 1 and here minus 1. And this is minus 1. Once you observe, when we write the numerators, n square, n square will get cancelled. Here minus n, here, here also minus n. Then what do you get? I think it's better. Minus is uh, uh, before and plus is here. Right? So, then you will got the 2n, but n is there. I will write 1 by 2 outside. Just partial fraction. Simple manipulation what I made. Okay? So, n square, n square got cancelled. Here plus n, here minus of minus plus n, 2n. Here minus 1 plus 1 got cancelled. So, I made here 1 by 2. So, now series is equal to S is equal to summation Tn. N is running from 1 to 10. Once you observe, 1 by 2 keep 1 by 2 outside. First term N is equal to 1. 1 by minus 1. Minus 
what do you get here? 1, 1 got cancelled. That is also 1 by 1. Next. That is 1, right, minus 2. Next, plus. When we give it 2, what do you get? 1 by 2 square minus 2 minus 1. 4, that means 1. Minus 1 by 2 square plus 2 minus 1. 4, 2. 6, 5. Obviously, we will get 1 by 5 here minus 1 by, when we take the 3 here, 3 square 9, 9 plus 3, 12. So, 11. Plus and so on, plus. Last one, 10. When we give 10, 100. This is 100. 100 minus uh, 11. 99. Right? So now 100 plus 10 minus 1, 110, 109. This is what it is. If you observe, these terms got cancelled. Obviously, these two. So what do you get finally? 1 by 2 times minus 1 minus 1 by 109. Uh, we want, yeah, so 2 will be there. 1 by 2. This is minus 110 by 109. If you divide minus 55 by 109. So minus 55 by 109 is the right answer. Right? So this is what it is. This is also right, easiest method using a telescopic series. But most important point here is most important point here is uh, this is the most important point. Right? Expressing as a difference of the two terms. Next. Next, one more beautiful question. I will give you the simplest answer ever. Sine inverse, inverse trigonometric function. Let us take sine inverse of alpha is equal to A. Sine inverse of beta is equal to B. Sine inverse of gamma is equal to C. What do you get? Alpha is sin A, beta is sin B, gamma is sin C. A plus B plus C is 90 uh, 180 degrees. So, this is a triangle. Here, once you observe this, this is a given one. I could write alpha plus beta all square minus gamma square is equal to 3 alpha beta. Afterwards, Simplest method, alpha square plus beta square minus gamma square. Here you will get 2 alpha beta. If you send it other side, minus 2 alpha beta, alpha beta. So, alpha square plus beta square plus gamma square by alpha beta, which is equal to 1. Right? So, 3 alpha beta here, alpha square plus beta square plus 2 alpha beta. I have written other side, 3 alpha beta minus alpha beta. Right? So now, minus gamma square, which is equal to 1. What is alpha? Alpha is sin A. Let us apply properties of triangles. As we know, A sin A is equal to 2R. Right? So, A is equal to, A is equal to 2R sin A. A is 2R sin A. So, that means sin A is equal to A by 2R. A by 2R. So, if you multiply numerator and denominator by 4R square, 4R square, this alpha square, right? Sin square A. 4R square, sin square B. 4R square, sin square C. So, that means what it is nothing but A square plus B square minus C square by, right? AB. What I do, I divide on both sides by 2. Do you remember? This is like a cos cosine rule. Cosine rule. Cos C is equal to 1 by 2. C is equal to 60 degrees. The easiest way. Easiest way. C is equal to 60 degrees. When C is equal to 60 degrees, what they are asking? Gamma. So, gamma is sine 60 degrees. Sine 60 degrees is equal to root 3 by 2. So, what we have applied here? 
So that's what we have applied here. So this is the important point, the cosine rule. This is the cosine rule what we have applied. And uh, we introduced the sine rule also. So if you know those two things and apply it, so very easily we can do this question. So gamma is equal to root 3 by 2. Next. Now the question from circles. Circles, right? So in circles, first we need to understand the given data. Visualize if it is possible, then take a course of action. These are the three steps we follow always. So first let us read with our uh, mind and heart both. If one of the diameter of the circle is a chord of another circle and whose center is the point of intersection of the lines, 2x plus 3y is equal to 12, 3x minus 2y is equal to 5, then the radius of the circle. So what they have given? They have given two circles. That is a one circle. The first one is, so one circle. And the second circle is, the second circle. This is the one, right? So here, what is the information is? Right. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's take this is A and this is B. This is the center. One of the diameter of the circle. So, this is the diameter of the smaller circle, this circle. So, what is the point here? This is C. C is 5 minus 2. And we will find radius also 25, 4. 25, 4, 29, 29 minus 6, 13, 25 plus 4 minus 13, what do you get, 29 minus 13, 16, so which is 4, so this is, this, this length is equal to 4, yes, ah, okay, fine, next, whose center is the, another circle whose center is the point of intersection of the line. So, this center is also given. So, somewhere this center is there. What is the center here? How do you find point of intersection of these two lines? Minus 12 is equal to 0. 3x minus 2y minus 5 is equal to 0. Let us use the cross multiplication method. 3 minus 2 minus 12 minus 5. 2, 3, 3 minus 2. So, then x by what I would get minus 15 plus 24 minus 15 plus 24 minus 15 no minus 24 only right so 39 so minus 39 which is equal to y by minus 36 plus 10 so minus 26 which is equal to 1 by minus 4 minus 9 so minus 13. So then what do you get? The center is 39 by 13, 3. So 3 comma 2. So this center is 3 comma 2. What do you want? We want, so we want radius. This is what we want. Right? Ha. Huh. So this is C1 and this is C2. What is C1, C2? C1, C2 is under root 5 minus 3, 2, 4 and minus 2 minus, so 16. What do you get? Root 20. Root 20 means, okay, just root 20, we will write. So, here radius we want R square is equal to C1, C2 whole square, it is a right angle triangle and BC square. What is C1, C2 whole square? 20 plus BC square, BC square is equal to 16, so 36. Then what is R? R is equal to 6. Just if you understand the question and visualize and apply the things, then we would get it even. It is a, a question from circles, coordinate geometry. Hi, Manish. How are you, Manish? Hakul? Adarsh? Sunita? Shuhail? Next. Next question. Limit x is tending to 0, e power mod 2 sin x minus 2 times mod sin x minus 1 by x square. 
but actually limit x is tending to 0 modulus is there x is tending to 0 modulus is there we need to find left and right limit left limit right so left limit and right limit we need to find but what i observed here when we apply actually we apply always first and foremost point in such questions we we learned the expansion expansions will help us a lot right so when we look at the expansions we are getting these first terms so because what the expansion here e power x 1 plus x plus x square by 2 factorial plus x cube by 3 factorial plus and so on so because of this with the given one 2 sin 2 mod sin x and minus 1 no role of modulus so that will not affect much so that's the reason what i will do i will apply expansion so when we apply expansion as we observe first term is 1 1 here minus 1 both will get cancelled second x x means mod 2 sin x here mod 2 sin x both will get cancelled starts from the second term so that means 2 square 4 times sin x mod sin x whole square by 2 factorial plus sorry uh, plus uh, 8 times mod sin x whole cube by 3 factorial plus and so on that how it will go uh, those two got cancelled this is x square this is x square right once you observe usually x is tending to modulus but x is tending to 0 this is a square square present so that plus sign or minus sign will not affect for example if you got so this term is also given here it starts from x cube so we need to calculate in the two different cases so then you may get does not exist but here no need to worry about this modulus is present and square is also present so no need to worry left and right limit both will be, have the same sign so no question of does not exist so then what we will write coefficient of x square sin x by x on that will become 4 by 4 by 2 so 4 by 2 is 2 remaining every part will become 0 expansion so 2 is the right answer suppose it is starting from x cube and that term is also given 8 times sin x whole power 3 mod sin x power 3 by 3 factorial in that case answer would be does not exist but here directly 2 next find the number of different words from distribution taking 4 at a time taking 4 at a time so calculation based method and this is also a direct question from the permutation and combination many times some many serious je aspirant will come across many times such models right so that is also uh, right uh, direct method now we need to calculate the given letters i how many i's 1 2 3 3 next t t is also repeated 1 2 only 2 right next i think all are different d i is done s t done r b u t i o n 3 4 5 6 7 yeah so 4 at a time we don't have direct formula in this case why because not just selection different words when the different words we need to arrange them when we are arranging those all are not different and it will vary how many like terms how many are unlike so we are not aware about it we will get a different possibilities that's the reason we don't have a direct single formula in this case so what we will do we will write it into the cases what are the cases what are the cases so like so what are the cases here the cases are three alike three alike one different so four alike is not possible so two alike two alike so two alike of one kind two alike of another kind so because the three two is present second case two alike two different right so two alike two different next all different that's all all different these are the three possible case, four four possible cases right four alike is not possible so that is not given two alike two alike two alike of one kind two alike of another kind 
so two alike two different so these are the possibilities so now we are going for the different words so that means we need to arrange also first we need to select three alike so this is the only one case we need to take it and one different how many different letters three four five six seven eight so this is also one right so eight so out of eight get one eight c one into how many letters do you have at present four letters arrange them four factorial in which three are alike so four factorial by three factorial so eight c one is eight four factorial by three factorial is four so directly this is 32 next Two alike, two alike. So two alike, two alike means only two groups are there. We take both. So two C two actually two C two. That what we will write. If you are next, we now we have four letters, four factorial in which two are alike of one kind by two factorial. Two are alike of another kind by two factorial. So two C two one four factorial twenty four twenty four by four that will become six. Next. Two alike of one kind. So two such groups are there. Either you can take both I or both T. So that means out of the two choices, take one choice. Either both I or both T. Right. Into two different. How many different? Here seven. Because we will take only one um, uh, between these two. So we left one. So there will be one more different. So eight different. Out of eight, you need two. So now we have four, four factorial in which two are alike. Two factorial. Two C12, two, two factorial. Both will get cancelled. So eight C2, we need to write eight C2, eight times seven by two times one. This is a four, seven fours are 28. And 4 factorial by 2 factorial, 24 by 2. So, 2 already got cancelled. So, 28 into 24 is also required. Right? 32, 3, 8, 11, and 16, 1, 5. So, 2, 7, 6. 6, 7, 2. So, this is 6, 72. Next. All are different. How many different? 7, 8, 9. So, 9. 9C4. 4 factorial. 9C4 into 4 factorial. So, how do you write the 9C4? 9C4 calculate. 9, 8, 7, 6, 4, 3, 2, 1. 4, 2, 0, 8. So, 3 here, 3 times. So, 21 times 6. So, that means 6, 126. And 4 factorial 24. So 126 times 24. Again, you multiply 6, 4 is 24. 4, 2 is 8, 10, 1, 5. And 126 times 125, 250, 252. So which is 4, 2, 3, 0, 24. 3, 0, 24. So add all. So 3, 0, 2, 4, 6, 7, 2, 38, 10, 14, 1, 10, 13, 1, 7, 3, 4, 3, 7, 3, 4. So these are the cases, different cases. Okay, okay, right, right. So this is a calculation based question. Now, again, a question from our favorite chapter vectors. A bar, B bar, C bar, B3 vectors, a vector P satisfies. So this is also direct model, right? Many times we come across these models. So what it is? P cross B, which is equal to C cross B. What I could write here, P bar minus C bar cross b bar which is equal to 0 bar so cross product of two vectors zero vector then three possibilities either first vector zero or the second vector zero or one vector is a parallel to other vectors so these vectors are not zero vector so p bar minus c bar is parallel to this that means lambda times b bar so then p bar is equal to c bar plus lambda times b bar that's what it is but they have given p bar dot a bar is equal to 0 so take a dot product by a which is equal to c dot a plus lambda times b dot a 
P dot A is zero, then C dot A. What is C dot A? Let us make it directly. Three ones are three minus three minus eight. So this is minus eight plus lambda times B dot A. So B dot A. Four times three twelve plus one minus fourteen minus fourteen. So thirteen minus so minus one. So lambda is equal to minus eight. So this is what it is. So if lambda is minus eight, but we want this. So we that means we want p bar. So p bar is c bar minus eight b bar, which is c bar. Yeah, we'll write it directly. C bar one. This is eight minus eight. Eight fours are thirty two. One minus thirty two. So minus thirty one. I cap. Next minus three. Here minus eight minus eleven j cap. Four, seven eight are fifty six, so fifty two. Right? Yes, fifty two. So once again, uh, C bar four, eight seven eight are fifty six. So four minus fifty six minus fifty two K cap. That's all. We want P dot I minus J minus K. What is that? Just dot product. Thirty one one minus thirty one plus eleven plus fifty two. So this is what our answer is. Sixty three minus thirty one plus sixty three. So what is the answer? Thirty two is the answer, right? Thirty two is the answer. Based on parallel vector. Question is given based based on parallel vectors. So this is next question. Next question. Now this geometry question from Fosse and let us rectum only find the square of eccentricity of okay so what is the first one first one is the ellipse x square by a square plus y square by b square which is equal to one Fosse Fosse is plus or minus five so a e is equal to five and let us rectum let us rectum is two b square by a we must now these values root fifty right. Ha. Huh. So root fifty means five root two. Two b square by a. So that means root two b square by a is equal to five. If it is necessary, we will use it later. Coming to a e is equal to five. A square e square is equal to twenty five. A square e square is a square minus b square, which is equal to twenty five. Right, but we want. What do you want? In case of hyperbola, a square x square by a square minus y square by a square b square is equal to one. So this is the eccentricity of hyperbola, e h, which is equal to one plus. This is a square b square by a square. That means one plus b square. We need b square in order to answer this question. Right. So for that. We need to use these two conditions. B square is equal to B square is equal to. So that means I will substitute here a square minus what is B square five a by root two, uh, which is equal to twenty five. So quadratic equation root two a square minus five a minus twenty five root two is equal to zero. So we need factors of this equation root two a square. Minus five a minus twenty five root two is equal to zero. Generally, what I do always, we multiply five one twenty five into root two. So that means fifty. So factors of fifty, ten five zar, right? So ten five zar. Ha, huh, fifty and minus five. I think we can manage it. So two root two a something a minus something. We need to balance this. Five a we want. So ten, so that means five root two. I will write it here. If I write five root two, what do you get? Root two a into five root two. So ten a, and here this is a plus five. So this is plus five a. That's all. So a is not negative. A is a positive value. A is equal to five root two. See how easy it is. So b square is equal to b square is equal to five a by root two. So five times five root two. 
by root 2, root 2, root 2 got cancelled, 25, b square is 25, then we have 1 plus 25 which is equal to root 26, right. So then square of the eccentricity answer is 26, a simple calculation, right, Kevin? Ashish, how are you Ashish? Akash. Jay means. No Akash, just practice, just practice. Hi Chandu. Right, we need to challenge ourselves every day in this practice. See, first time when we learn, always, always we have fear, right? Yeah. Now we have reached to another favorite chapter, differential equation. So now let us see the differential equation question here, y dx dy is equal to x times. So, I think everything is like dx by dy, it's better to make it x by y. So, what I do, dx by dy is equal to x by y and this is a log x by y, that could be better, right, again plus x by y. You can take x by y is equal to, it's like a a homogeneous equation x is equal to vy dx by dy which is equal to v plus v plus y times dv by dy just replace standard method v plus y times dv by dy which is equal to v log v plus v v we got cancelled we are so happy when these terms got cancelled, the simplification, differentiation will be, integration will be more simple. Then, my dear students, dv by v times log v, which is equal to dy by y. Here integral, here also integral. Yes. Log y derivative to 1 by y. So, derivative of log y is here. So, that means this is nothing but log of log v which is equal to log y. Everything is coming in terms of log. Let us write log c. So, log v is equal to c y. So, this is what it is. So, what is v? So, log x by y which is equal to c y. So, just find c by putting the values e1, e comma 1. So, when we write e and 1, x is equal to e, y is equal to 1, log e1 and y is 1. So, c is 1, c is 1, right? So, this is the right answer, d is the right answer. Yes. Next. Next, another beautiful question from, this is from binomial theorem, 1 plus x, 1 minus x square, 1 plus 3 by x square plus 3 by x plus 1 by x cube power 5. So, 1 plus x, again this question tests our presence of mind when we are looking at this expression. If you observe, that is nothing but 1 by 1 plus x whole power 3. 3 power 5, so 15. Have you noticed here? Always we remember a plus b whole cube, right? a cube plus 3a square, b plus 3ab square plus b cube, right? So, similar weight is there. So, we can write it as a 1 plus 1 by x power 15. So, when we simplify this, 1 plus x, here also 1 plus x, what I could write? 1 minus x times 1 plus x power here 2, 2 more, so 17 by x power 15. So, this is the given expansion, given, given uh, expression, right? So, in this, see we have simplified successfully with our standard binomial forms. So, whenever we get the standard binomial forms directly, we will apply. So, in this case, some of the coefficients of x cube, x cube coefficient and x power minus 13 coefficient. So, coefficient of x cube, so coefficient of x cube in the given expansion is coefficient of x cube 
so 15 so coefficient of x power 15 in 1 minus x times 1 plus x power 17 do you agree because if you get x power 18 coefficient in the numerator but already x power 15 is there so that is the finally it could be coefficient of x power 3 so that's the reason i am finding coefficient of x power 18 but the maximum power of x in the second binomial expansion is 17 only so you won't get anything here right one time so minus x times when we multiply x power 17 by x you would get right so that is nothing but one only na here minus one there is uh, 17 c 17 so one only so how simple it is after looking at here so coefficient of next one coefficient of x power minus 13 so that means coefficient of x power minus 13 minus 13 so meaning x power 15 is there so coefficient of x square in 1 plus x 1 minus x times 1 plus x whole power 17 so we need coefficient of x square so a coefficient of x square for your reference i will write 1 minus x this is 1 plus 17 c1 x plus 17 c2 x square plus and so on like that you would get the expansion we want coefficient of x square so what is the coefficient of x square 1 is multiplied by 17 c2 so that is 17 c2 minus 17 c1 that's all no other term present here right so because after that x cube will come so x cube is multiplied by 1 you would get x cube x cube is multiplied by x you will get x power 4 so there are only two possibilities to get x power 2 so what is 17 c2 the easiest way to calculate the 17 into 16 by 2 minus this is 17 this is 8 so don't multiply of course you have multiply you know multiplication don't show your prowess of multiplication here just to take the common 17 8 minus 1 7 so now you multiply why unnecessarily multiply there and again sub, sub, subtract so 7 and this is a 7 and 49 right 119 this is 119 but sum we want the sum is equal to first coefficient minus 1 this is 119 we would get 118 right so this is how we can enjoy the calculation ha huh. this is a minimum number of minimum number minimum number many times we are getting it just you can practice this question you will get the answer is 15 in this case right so checking those possible cases right now another beautiful question this question this question will differentiate the rankers from the others right a few questions will be there three to four questions such questions will be there these questions only differentiate right rest from the rankers right hi sunny now let us see y square is equal to y square is less than or equal to 4x this is okay x is less than 4 fine so that means what is the diagram here right now we have a parabola we have a parabola right after that we have a line here so this line is nothing but right so this is nothing but four this is 4 so inside this is but one more condition is there what is that y this whole part is less than 0 so when y is but we don't know why y can be positive as well as a negative we will take y is greater than 0 when y is greater than 0 what do you get remaining x x minus 1 x minus 2 x minus 3 x minus 4 which is less than 0 so when such expressions are there what we will do we will take a wavy curve method everybody knows 0 1 2 3 4 here plus minus plus minus plus minus that's all we want less than 0 when we want it is less than 0 which cases are we getting more than 0 is enough right 
so y is greater than 0 and we are also working for y greater than x greater than 0 so less than 0 1 to 2 so 1 to 2 right this is 1 to 2 and 2 to 3 2 to 3 right so that means this is 1 2 1 2 2 negative 1 2 2 yes next 3 to 4 3 to 4 so then this is not required it's 3 to 4 so this is what it is next suppose y is less than 0 so this whole part is this whole part is greater than 0 so the same thing we can take 0 to 1 so that is 0 to 1 so 0 to 1 next negative part negative part positive part 2 to 3 so 2 to 3 let us take the some other uh, ah. right so this is what it is in first part what we have in first part what we have 1 2 2 1 2 2 negative value 1 2 2 so let us keep this line So complete it is coming out. Okay. Yes, this is one to two we want right this portion we want and 3 to 4 we want here next here what we want 0 to 1 and 2 to 3 if you observe this portion it is given this way but as this curve is symmetric with respect to x axis this portion and this portion both are equal these two are equal these two are equal so that means answer is nothing but integral 0 to 4 since the curve is symmetric with respect to x axis 0 to 4 uh, 2 root x that's all simple question but coming to the simple point is a important point so this is x power 3 by 2 so 2 by 3 times x power 3 by 2 limits 0 to 4 so 4 by 3 times here when we substitute 4 it would be 8 8 minus 0 so that is 32 by 3 so this is the answer right but before that getting this is important so then then only then problem is very simple right see how beautifully they have given this question so a few questions are beautiful questions based on the conceptual observation right so here if you divide this see uh, this is a wavy curve method in order to decide after that coming to the graph and putting these points so after that what happened they beautifully they removed this part and this part so no need to find like a one this one area a1 a2 a3 a4 not at all required so since it is a symmetric we can directly find a 0 to 4 right that's a beauty in this question next a basket has a 15 good apples and three rotten apples two apples are drawn from this basket let the number of rotten apples drawn be the random variable x find the variance so it is a little bit a random variable probability distribution because the binomial distribution used to get a many questions but this time binomial distribution is removed right from the syllabus so that's why we are getting a, a standard question from the probability so now this session we got a random variable question so what is the random variable question the rotten apples how many 
total three rotten apples, right? So, but we are taking a three, two apples, two apples. So, zero apple, zero, zero rotten apple. So, but uh, actually probability distribution, P of X, X. Right? So, zero, one rotten apple, both are rotten apples. Right? So, this is probability distribution table. So, zero. So, all are good apples. 15 C2 by 18 C2. So, what is 15 C2? 15 times 14 by 18 times 17. So, then what we can write? Uh, we can cancel out 3. 3 times 6. 3, 5 here. Right? So, 2, 3, 7. That's all. Yes, this is 35 by 51. Now only one. So 15 C1. So that means we can write directly 15 next to 3, 18 C2. What is this? 15, 3. We will get a 2 because from the 18 C2. And 18 into 17. So 3, 6 times here. 2, 3 times. 3, 5 times. So, which is equal to 5 by 17. So, 5 by 17, we can also write it as a 51 year denominator. Na? So, 3 times. So, 15 by 51. So, that could be better. So, 35, 50. So, this is obviously 1 by 51. Well, because the sum should be 1. Na? So, this is 35 by 51. And this is 15 by 51. 35 plus 15, 40. 40 by 51, uh, 51. 40 now, 50, 50 by 51, so 1 by 51. So that's all. Huh. What do you want? We want variance. So lengthy, right? No, not lengthy. We have one formula. What is that formula? Sigma square. Variance is equal to sigma xi square into p of x is equal to xi minus mu square. This is the most interesting result in statistics as well as in probability, right? So, first we want mu. We need to find mu. What is mu? Sigma xi times p of x is equal to xi. What is that? When you multiply these two, 0. This is 5 by 17. So, that means 15 by 51. Plus, what about this? 2 by 51. What do you get? 15 plus 17 by 51. 17 by 51 is 1 by 3. So, this is 1 by 3. Now, we can write xi square anyhow it will become 0 and this one will be 1 1 that means 5 by 17 plus xi square 2 square 4 4 by 51 minus mu square 1 by 9 so that's all see how simple it is uh, so 51 so 15 so 15 by 51 19 by 51 this is 19 by 51 minus 1 by 9 right so, this is nothing but 51 times 9, the can cancel, 19 into 9, 90, 81, 171, so 170. You can simplify this part, right? Ah, see, how simply, how we can avoid calculation. So, that is the beauty, what we are doing it here, right? Next, parallelogram ABCD is given such that two-dimensional geometry, from basics, elementary two-dimensional geometry, then what we have, what it says A, B, C, D, a line 3y is equal to 2x plus 1 passes through A and C, find the value of alpha plus beta plus gamma plus delta. So, everybody knows the standards of standard geometry, two-dimensional geometry, first and foremost point, everybody knows A, B, C, D is a parallelogram first and foremost point diagonals bisect each other so this is alpha beta a is alpha beta c is gamma delta diagonals bisect each other so that what we know so d is equal to 1 comma 2 so what is the midpoint of bd so this midpoint is that is nothing but 1 plus 1 by 2 1 2 plus 1 so that is 1 right 
what is the midpoint here alpha plus gamma by 2 and beta plus delta by 2 so how easy this is nothing required right so that means alpha plus gamma is equal to 2 beta plus delta is also 2 if you or uh, if you want to add both alpha plus beta plus gamma plus delta answer will be 4 how simple it is from using elementary coordinate geometry next this question is already given in previous session also same exactly same question uh, but not this 192 sin square alpha so they asked angle between b bar and c bar exactly the same question right ha huh. so c bar is equal to again i will do it here 2 a cross b minus 3 b 3 b bar now a b all these things are given we will take b and c na take a cross product dot product by b b dot c this will be 0 minus 3 times b dot b so b dot b means 4 square so mod b that is a 4 mod c cos of angle between b bar and c bar which is equal to 3 times 4 square minus 3 4 4 got cancelled mod c cos angle between b and c which is equal to minus 12 so this is what it is right but we want angle between b bar and c this is a mod c into c is not known to us c is not known to us 2 times a cross b minus 3 times b we need magnitude of c in order to get magnitude of c magnitude of c wow how how can how can we find so take a dot product by c because a dot a is mod a square na? so a dot a is mod a square so taking a dot product by again c so that is c dot c mod c square what do you get if you take a dot product by the same vector this is a 4 times mod a cross b whole square plus 9 times mod b square because this this is nothing but a plus b whole square this is a square plus b square minus 2a dot b so that's what we have applied so coming to dot product a cross b and b both are perpendicular to each other so that dot product will become zero now 4 times can i find this yes we have formula a cross b whole square is many times we use this minus a dot b whole square what is a square 1 b square 4 so or b is a 4 so b square 16 minus a dot b 2 4 so which is equal to 12 so 4 times 12 this is plus 9 times uh, 16 so which is nothing but 48 and this is 144 180 192 so mod c square is equal to 192 so 192 is nothing but 16 times 12 16 times 12 so therefore mod c is equal to 4 times 12 12 means um, uh, 2 root 3 2 root 3 so let's substitute this 12 times root 3 cos bc which is equal to minus 12 right so 16 18 yes 192 correct so mod c is a 4 4 root 12 4 3 jar so that means that is a 2 root 3 so when it is a 2 root 3 so this is 8 root 3 8 root 3 so 8 4 3 jar here 4 2 jar so then cos angle between so which is equal to minus root 3 by 2 so angle is angle between b and c is a 150 degrees negative na 150 degrees so we want 192 into sin square 150 degrees so 192 into sin square 190 sin square 150 degrees that means nothing but sin 30 degrees that is 1 by 4 4 can cancel 4 4 are and 8 so 48 is the answer okay same question is repeated again here next next question this is from maximum and minima 
f of x is given many times we come across more, one of the most important model to find the local maxima number of local maxima and local minima so coming to here f dash of x what is f dash of x f dash of x is e power x minus 1 power 11 2x minus 1 power 15 x minus 3 power 18 2x minus 10 power 19 so this is a derivative so when it is a derivative how do you find the maxima minima using a first derivative test or second derivative test but in this case second derivative test will be more complicated so i am proceeding with the first derivative test itself sign changes if you can act if you can find you can decide local maxima local minima so that's the reason i am taking sign changes i want to observe the sign changes now first we get the critical points critical points this is one by two and uh, here 3 and here 5 and one more critical point x is equal to e power x is equal to 1 x is equal to 0. So these are the four critical points. Now let's apply wavy curve method. This is a plus always. It's a power is 11, uh, 19, so minus. But power of x minus 3 is 18, even number, no sign changes. And after that, sign changes. Again, after that, sign changes right so if there is a sign change then only it is a point of extremum so zero sign changes one by two sign changes that is also point of three is not a point of extremum but we want p and q separately number of maxima is p number of points of minima q right so in such cases maxima so maxima means left side increasing right side decreasing so left side increasing means left side positive and right side negative left side positive right side negative so this for 1 by 2 it is there so it is a maximum point of maxima so zero what about left side negative decreasing right side positive increasing so this is a point of minima it is a it's not an extremum so what about this point left side negative decreasing right side increasing it's a point of minima so p is 1 and q is equal to 2 we want p square plus 2 q so that is 1 plus 4 which is nothing but 5 so this is the easiest way to answer this question okay so next next one more question here this question is from vectors a line perpendicular to the line so yesterday directly perpendicular uh, perpendicular distance from the point to the line but here line is not given line is a perpendicular to the given two lines and passes through a line passes through a point x1 y1 z1 what do you write x minus 5 by something y minus 3 by something and z plus 2 by something we want those drs we want drs in order to find the drs so our line is perpendicular to both the lines when our line is perpendicular to both the lines our line is parallel to cross product of those two lines so that is the first and foremost point from vector product a cross b is a vector perpendicular to both a bar and b bar so that's the reason so we find it's a cross product cross product of these two vectors i j k 1 1 2 1 1 2 2 minus 1 1 since cross product is a vector which is perpendicular to both the vectors so that's what we want so i cap its a component is 1 plus 2 3 minus j cap 1 minus 4 minus 3 plus k cap k cap what do you get here minus 1 minus 2 so minus 3 so 3 play, 3 3 minus 3 but we want just uh, right drs no need to take a 3 so simplest way we can write 1 1 minus 1 that's all right now we got a line so when we have a line already we know the procedure the procedure what is the procedure so when we have a line so there is a line here after that we will write a general point general point this this is the given point 0 2 minus 2 
and this is perpendicular we write q q is a general point on this line how do you take it is la lambda so lambda plus 5 and lambda plus 3 and uh, minus lambda minus 2 what do what should we write drs of drs of pq bar what is the drs of pq bar lambda plus 5 lambda plus 3 minus 2 so lambda plus 1 uh, minus so plus so minus lambda pq bar is perpendicular to the line when pq bar is perpendicular to the line so product a1 a2 plus b1 b2 plus c1 c2 so lambda plus 5 times 1 here lambda plus 1 and plus lambda which is equal to 0 so 3 lambda which is equal to minus 6 lambda is equal to minus 2 so when lambda is equal to minus 2, substitute minus 2 there. Minus 2 plus 5, 3. Minus 2 plus 3 plus 1. Minus 2 of minus 2, that became 0. So 3, 1, 0 will become our put of the perpendicular. Okay, so that's all. So this is uh, one more question, a beautiful question. And uh, it is uh, linked with binomial limits. Binomial limits and quadratic expression, right? Binomial uh, limits and quadratic expression. So these three parts are given. Let A be the sum of the coefficients in the expansion. Sum of the coefficients. When we want sum of the coefficients, just we put variable is equal to 1. Even we have more number of variables, always we will put a variable is equal to 1 so that we will get sum of the coefficients, right? So put x is equal to 1 here. 1 minus 2, 2. So, 1 only. 3 minus 4, 2. 5 minus, so 1 only. So, this is equal to 1. A is equal to 1. Are Very simple. Now, B. We need to find B. See, in order to find B, 0 by 0. Right? Allopital rule. So, limit X is tending to 0. Apply Leibniz theorem there. Log 1 plus X x power 2024 plus 1 by 2x Achha. so still it is 0 by 0 but don't go for again allopital because we directly we have formula what is the formula limit extends to 0 1 by 2 times 1 by x log 1 plus x as x is tending to 0 this is equal to 1 x power 2024 plus 1 then we directly substitute. This is a direct formula 1, 0 plus 1, 1. So this is equal to 1 by 2. B is equal to 1 by 2. Huh. Substitute here 2B. 2B is 1. So x square. A is also 1. x plus 4 is equal to 0. What is the second equation? Cx square plus dx plus e is equal to 0. Both have a common root. When Two quadratic equations have is having common root, then different cases we will get. There is a big condition, right? So square is equal to something a product of the two. The second one is the second one is one of such line, one of such expression or such quadratic equation having complex roots. One of quadratic equation having complex root, both roots must be same. So then both equations must be same. When both equations are same, then coefficients are in the same ratio. <laughs> right. So that's the point what we have here. Whenever we have the ratio, obviously such point will be present. Here you see the discriminant. Discriminant is negative. When the discriminant is negative, complex roots and coefficients are real. When coefficients are real and one of the equation is having complex roots, both roots must be the same. So then I can write C by 1 is equal to D by 1 is equal to E by 4. So this is what it is. So whatever ratio you want 1, 1, but D, 1, C, 1. So 1 is to 1 is to 4. That is the answer. See how beautiful this is. So like these are the questions. Uh, these are the questions from this, sec uh, this session, right? I hope you all enjoyed. Hi, Tanisha. Senapati, Chandu, Janupalaredi, Sunny. Right? That's all. This is the session. Yesterday's, right? 31st January, Shift 1 Solutions.
Thank you. Bye bye, my dear students.